After opening the 2017-2018 ACHA Division II season with a 6-2 defeat at home at the hands of the guest Santa Clara University Broncos ice hockey at UCSB looks to bounce back and secure their first points on the season and split the opening weekend. Hello, my name is Eric Ebelhawk. I'm joined by Kyle Nicholas here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB broadcast network with cameraman Jesse Gutierrez and technical director and statistician Jasmine Kellogg as Kyle, UCSB looking to avoid some ignominious history as this the third year in the Ice in Paradise era. The Gauchos looking to try and avoid the sweep on the opening weekend for the first time since their initial year here in the Goleta facility. And it's going to be a tall order here this evening. Ice hockey at UCSB kind of got a bit of a wake-up call last night as to what life is like here in the ACHA. We talked a lot last night about how young the Gauchos are, and I think there was a lot of learning experiences and lessons that specifically those younger players could take in terms of the speed, the physicality, what works on this level, what doesn't work. You noticed a lot that UCSB tried to work the puck behind the net and feed it into the low slot. Santa Clara had none of that last night. So now the big question is going to be, how are the Gauchos going to adjust here in this second game? And is there any going to be any sort of carryover animosity that might feed into this game and maybe influence it a little bit further? Bright signs for the Gauchos in the first game. Both of their goals scored by first-year players getting the first of the season from the stick of Chris Awasiak and then Austin Trenner adding the second. The Gauchos went down in the game last night, 2-0 in the first two minutes on a pair of goals by A.J. Hood. It was 3-0 after two, but UCSB was twice able to get within two goals in the third period, 3-1 after Awasiak's goal, 4-2 after Trenner, but from there Santa Clara shut the slot down and really kept some of the exuberant young players for the Gauchos who, as you mentioned, trying to work the puck behind the net and funnel to the slot, but also attacking from the outside wings and firing from the edges, doing the sort of things that may have worked in the Los Angeles Kings High School Hockey League, in the California Amateur Hockey Association, in the various other junior leagues that these 12 new faces for the Gauchos have played in. As you mentioned, Kyle, a learning experience last night, but we also learned that there's a lot to be excited about that this youth brings to the program that showed good signs last night. Absolutely. I think we couldn't have understated the excellent performances we got from Colin Del Bonus and Chris Awasiak last night. They were sensational in their Gauchos debut, Awasiak getting the goal. We also had an excellent game from Austin Trenner, who really showed he's unafraid to get to the front of the net and I think it kind of went a little bit unheralded last night, but as I went back and kind of reviewed the game, got a very good performance from a lot of the other ones as well. Dimitri Strategos had a very good game as well. He seemed like he was all over the offensive zone, and pucks seemed to find him in dangerous areas of the ice when the Gauchos were able to get it there. If he can keep going to some of those lanes and keep putting pucks through on net, UCSB's got a good chance of getting a few more pucks by this goaltender. Conversely, we also saw the mixture of some of the familiar faces for the Gauchos, returning captain Justin Goldser, assistants Tyler Barone, Dimitri Piagai, Andrew Vieira. The pairing of Vieira and Piagai primarily had skated together last night, but we also did see some incorporation with the likes of Liam Gallant, uh, the big imposing Emmett Rupert, who took 14 minutes in penalties last night all for being overtly physical, no fear of the style at this side, and also getting some important minutes later in the evening defensively from the likes of Adam Mangroni and Connor May. Absolutely, so there is definitely a youth movement on the Gauchos blue line. The one thing they need to be aware of, this Santa Clara team is not afraid to play a game where they just sit back because they have the speed to counterattack back the other direction specifically the player of the game last night who has a thing for hanging out on the opposition blue line, A.J. Hood, the man to watch here this evening. And Hood was set up twice by Kyle Perez. It bears mentioning as well the performance on the second line of Dakota Binniger and Chris Brown. Binniger had a three-point night with a goal and two assists. Well, Brown scored what you could say was arguably the game-turning goal. Six seconds after the Gauchos had made it 3-1, 
He beat starting Gaucho netminder Will Hahn, and will be back between the pipes tonight from the top of the left circle, and that completely altered the makeup of the game. This Santa Clara side, a little bit undermanned. Several players did not make the trip down from Northern California. However, they were able to play the sort of disciplined style that head coach Jackson Morgus and the program has been so renowned for in recent seasons. Absolutely. The defensive structure was just on display last night. They were content to sit in the high danger area, or, you know, the high and mid slot kind of between the circles and down towards the top of the crease, letting very little in the way of pucks get there. Frankie Nix is an excellent goaltender. He really didn't have to work all that hard last night. The defense in front of him really made his job fairly easy. It's going to get a little bit tougher here tonight, though, as you talk about Santa Clara being undermanned. The Gauchos, on the other hand, get a very important piece back here this evening in Christian Okpish. Yeah, Christian Okpish, who missed last night's contest due to a family issue. What does he bring back for ice hockey at UCSB? Last year, in the eight games he played with the team, he scored four goals and had six assists, two power play goals, and a power play assist. And the first season that these two teams, or that this program, I should say, played here on the Ice in Paradise sheet in the National Collegiate Hockey Association, he led the team with eight goals scored and had three assists for 11 points in the eight games played. In the two games that the Gauchos faced this Santa Clara side last season, the man they call Ox scored two goals and had an assist. He will be a welcome return to this Gaucho lineup tonight. And as we always do, as we wind down the Center Ice Santa Barbara pregame show, Center Ice Santa Barbara is a premier destination, the premier destination for hockey and figure skating equipment and apparel in the Central California area. 7127 Hollister Avenue, Suite 8 in Goleta. Mr. Nicholas. What are Kyle's keys for the game tonight? Key number one is going to be the veteran players from Ice Hockey at UCSB need to step up. The two goals yesterday came from rookies. It's time to see Cooper Spears, Justin Goldzer, and the player we talked a lot about, Christian Ockfish. It's time to see these players start really making an impact on the score sheet. These are the guys that are going to have to lead the Gauchos every single night. Not a whole lot of big performances. Granted, Cooper Spears and several other of them played good games last night, but they're going to have to be great for UCSB to be good here tonight. Number two, shot selection for UCSB. Last night they were very content to take a lot of low quality, low chance shots from out towards the sideboards down near the goal line because Santa Clara wasn't letting them on the inside. UCSB needs to keep working away at it, keep passing the puck around, maybe consider working the puck back towards the top of the point, bring it to the middle of the ice, and get it around the shot blocker so it can get down towards the front of the net. If UCSB can get a net front presence down there, I like their opportunities to score in a few more goals here tonight. And number three, I mean, you're not going to do very well unless you can slow down the other team's best players. A.J. Hood proved he's up there with the best of them in the way he can dominate a game. You have got to find a way as a team to make sure you keep track of a player of his stature and make sure that he's slowed down and kept off the score sheet. It was a close contest that these two teams played last night. UCSB out shooting Santa Clara at 35 to 31. Special teams were such a big part of the series between these two sides last season. Santa Clara held Ofer on four attempts on the power play by the Gaucho penalty kill. Conversely, the Gaucho power play came up empty in their two opportunities with the extra man. So the, the power play, it would be good to see it get going, but it was a welcome relief. I know as someone who watched this team struggle with the penalty kill all last year, to see the Gauchos go a perfect four for four when going down a man, when you know this team has an affinity for playing very physical, being young, being inexperienced, and maybe taking a few rash penalties last night, it was good to see the rest of the team step up and make sure that that, that chance went completely by the wayside for Santa Clara. UCSB 0-1-0 on the 2017-18 season. That one game last night against Santa Clara, a Pacific Collegiate Hockey Association game. The Broncos 3-1-0 coming into tonight, are 2-0-0 in conference play. They hold the early lead atop the PCHA table. Teams line up for the national anthem. So we'll step aside for that. We thank you for joining us for the Center Ice Santa Barbara pregame show on the web at centericesb.com, center spelled the Canadian way. Back after this, the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network.
We settle in for the second game of the 2017-18 ACH season for ice hockey at UCSB as the Gauchos face the Santa Clara University Broncos. We hope you're happy settling in, joining us either on UCSBHockey.com's live Ustream broadcast or new this year, the Facebook live stream. It's part of the Gaucho social media presence. If you don't like us already, like us at Facebook.com slash Ice Hockey UCSB. You can watch live and archive broadcasts there in addition to YouTube, as well as follow on Twitter at UCSB Ice Hockey, on Instagram, UCSB Ice Hockey, and when you come and attend a game live here at Ice in Paradise in Goleta, be sure to use the special Ice Hockey at UCSB Snapchat filter. So who are the players you'll be getting social about in watching tonight's contest? The starting lineups for both teams, they look like this. For Santa Clara, they send out a forward line with Brendan Bordingham in the middle with Andrew Seitz and Michael Lavarado on the wings. Team captain Phil Park joined on the blue line with Aiden Rupert in front of Frankie Nix. UCSB sending out Colin Del Bonus in the middle with Chris Awasiak and Justin Goldzer on his wings. Pia Guy and Vier on defense in front of Will Hahn and the Gauchos immediately attack the blocker save on Justin Goldzer as the Gauchos fire the first on net less than 10 seconds into action. Iwasiak stood up at the blue line by Rupert Rupert carries into the zone and will angle it back behind. He was a real physical presence for Santa Clara in the game last night, able to draw a couple penalties on the Gauchos, and now Brendan Bordingham getting into it as well as it's played back behind the net for Andrew Vieira. His attempted clear hits Goldzer, stays in. Brendan Bordingham shot from between the circles, and Han has it and holds. And that's one of the areas I would really like to see UCSB work on here this evening. Those passes to get out of the zone were not really tape to tape or too strong last night. UCSB seemed content to go for the off at the glass and out strategy, but oftentimes a lot of a lot of those didn't even make it out last night. So for UCSB, I'd like to see that breakout in that first pass get at least outside of the blue line. Defensive zone draw was won by Christian Ockpish, who's out there with Austin Trenner, as well as Cooper Spears for what appears to be the Gaucho's second line tonight. Pressure in behind the Gaucho end as the Perez, Hood, and Binniger line is out for Santa Clara. Held in at the far point by Cameron Burke. Gauchos continue to jam away in front of the bench. Assistant coach Ben Brecker leaning away as it goes back in behind the net. Played forward, Ockpish will sweep it out. Spears drops it back for the carry-in. Migroni for Ockpish, shoots and a save made by Frankie Nix, and he holds it in the crook of his right arm. And UCSB right away doing a little bit better at getting their way into the zone and skating it a little bit further down into a more dangerous shooting area. They appear to be having a little more success getting over the blue line here early. You can already see the difference having that big, imposing offensive presence of Christian Ockfish, as well as his ability to carry that puck through the zone and what that can do for this Gaucho offense. Barone, Strategos, and Herlihy, the forward line on the ice for the Gauchos, as Park can't clear. It's held in at the far point by Connor May on the second try. Pitch forked out by Brown. Back to retrieve Liam Gallant. Gallant able to clear it out. Dancing at the line, Brown will rag it back. Rupert sends it for Park. He'll play it forward for Brendan Bordingham, who had it knocked away by May. Touched across. And here comes the carry-in up the near side. Strategos couldn't keep possession of it, but Barone knocked it into the slot. Park couldn't clear. Held back in by Strategos, and he goes to retrieve in the far corner. Plays it behind the net, where Park intercepts. Gauchos with an aggressive... Four check here, shot hits Park in the slot and goes to the far boards, will be banged out off the dasher by Brown. Strategos, and it's swept back into the UCSB end as Gaucho's in the midst of a change, Andrew Vieira on. Binniger steps up in forward pressure. But with time and space, Justin Goldzer will carry in and slowly roll it behind the net. Big hit behind as swept back around by A.J. Hood. Pia Guy activates, but Burke has it. Plays it to the point, not out. Barone drops it off. Pass to the slot, deflected by Perez. Gets it back off the touch from Burke and will head man it out. Ahead for A.J. Hood. 
too far and icing is waved as he was there ahead of Vieira. And the far boards, Binniger stepped into and dispossessed. Barone still out there, long shift for him. And he'll finally go off as Piagai turns and wheels behind his own net with 6.40 to go here in the first period. 16.40, I should say, to go here in the first period. So that felt fast. Owasio, shot high and wide, comes to the near side boards where Hood, checked by Goldser, but able to possess and carry out their neutral ice. Look at the wheels on A.J. Hood, takes it to the front of the net and lost it on the backhand at the last second as Piagai put a hip into him. And a good last second desperation play from Piagai to get just enough and not take a penalty there either. Gauchos with it, two on two. Del Bonus takes the hit from Rupert, but Aiden able to sweep it away behind his cage for Park. Nick's directing traffic. Pass unable to link up with Brown, but it'll roll back into the Gaucho, and his Pia guy stretches it forward for Goldser, and he'll dump it in behind. Nix angles it forward for Seitz. Bordingham, nice job stepping by Pia guy, feeds for Brown. Brown, shot, sticked up into the mesh netting, and it goes off the rink from the Big paddle of Will Hahn. And Will Hahn, actually contrary to the score yesterday, I thought he had an excellent game, specifically going up against A.J. Hood. I know the score sheet shows that A.J. Hood put four past him last night, but there could have been at least another hat trick worth that would have gone in. Hood had four breakaways last night where he was in behind the defense that Hahn successfully stopped. So. Last night may not have looked good on the score sheet at the stat line. It looked great in the building. Gauchos now breaking in. Trenner backhand pass to the slot, intercepted by the late arriving Hood. He'll carry it forward. Sent wide, but carries and shoots short side. Han seals it off. Battle on the end boards is Emmett Rupert. He'll play for Trenner. Trenner clears to the line, not out. Mark McDowell held it in, but his pass blocked by Ockfish on the second try. Perez. Couldn't get it deeper, and now it's angled forward. Chance for Cooper Spears. He's on side, but takes the hit in the numbers from Cameron Burke to dispossess him. And now we have a penalty off the play as Burke is going to be called for the extra chop on Spears. I and think he's going to get both of them, actually. Gauchos and the Broncos. Maybe not. It looks like UCSB is going to get their first power play here of the night. Good play from Cooper Spears to sort of sell that call at the very end. Look, got into it just a little bit there with Cameron Burke. And then managed to do just enough to convince the referee to raise the arm on the retaliation push. Both these teams were not shy about playing physical last night, but UCSB, with a few exceptions, did a fairly good job of keeping their composure. Something actually they kind of struggled with a little bit last season, but earned themselves a few power plays last night by, by doing that. Gaucho's 0 for 2 last night. As Barone off the draw, plays it back for Vieira. Walks the line, gives back for Barone. Barone shoots high and wide of the right-hand glove of Nix, held in by Rupert. Owasiak. McDowell sweeps it away from him, but Owasiak does a nice job to lift the stick of Lavarado and keep possession. Switches for Vieira. Vieira shot through traffic. Tip Goldser hoisted the backhand wide near post. Oh, man, that would have been beautiful, too, just on that Goldser spinorama. to the slot. Barone stubbed it off his heel. Fordingham gives chase on the near side boards, but it's speared deeper for Goldser. Goldser, box penalty kill from Santa Clara here as Barone played it back to the line for Vieira and gets it back. Barone on the backhand. Barone tried to walk it in front. The box collapses. Now back for Vieira. Shot. Padded away to the far corner by Nix. Awasiak back to the point, and Rupert can't hold it in. And on the forecheck, check, Lavarado knocks it away. He's in ahead on Hahn. Will makes a nice save on the shorthanded break in by Lavarado with 55 seconds remaining on the power play. Stretch pass was looking for Barone, slapped by Rupert. He calls looking to see if there were too many men with the Gauchos trying to complete the change. No call from the official as it's sent down the ice by Hood. Scoreless here with 13.35 to go in the first period. As Okpish angles it in behind. Nix will set it up on the backhand for Rupert. And Rupert sends it the length of the sheet. 
chance for probably one more rush up here, up the ice from the Gauchos as it deflects along the right side boards. Piagai giving pressure, but it gets through Okpish at the line, and Gallant will have to rewind back. Del Bonus angles it in. McDowell hammers it out, back in on Hahn. And UCSB is 0-for-1 on the power play this evening. And it was a good-looking power play until UCSB just lost possession. UCSB needs to do a little bit of work on making sure that they can reset and reestablish that power play cycle, but since they won that faceoff and got set up right off of it, UCSB looked very good at that point. Boardingham will carry in for Santa Clara. Winds and fires, blocker to the near side corner, confidently by Hahn. Glass and out as McDowell has Spears on his back. Spears comes up with his steal, shoots it off the near side of the net. Held in at the point, shot, nicks the save, rebound loose, knocked it free, makes another save as Austin Trenner had another good chance in that danger area. Picking up the poked free puck, but shot it right into the middle of the SC crest on his chest. And Austin Trenner just seems to find pucks in that danger area of the ice. Better pucks seem to find him one of the two, but good patient goaltending from Frankie Nix on that one to not buy the quick move darting across the front of the net. Didn't buy it, stood his ground, and the puck wound up going right into the bread basket. Defensive zone draw. Santa Clara was so good on these last night. And they take possession here as Perez will angle it out. Hood couldn't get past Rupert. Played far side for Herlihy. Herlihy's shot wide. Kicks to the near point. Rupert holds it in. Now Barone has it back and angles it for Herlihy in the corner. Hurley escapes the McDowell check. Gives it up for Barone. Barone ridden off it by McDowell. Played to the point. Step up by McGroney, but swept out the length by Binniger as he steps forward on the forecheck on Rupert. McGroney lost the puck, taken away by Hood. Hood tries to sneak it far post. Couldn't get it centered on Hahn as Park holds the near point. Hood, backhander, sent wide. Chase given by Perez. Park activates. Binniger on the second try sends it back into the corner. Negroni can't get it out. Played in front. Looking for Hood, swept through his feet. And Hurley will carry out for the Gauchos. Hurley shoots it in with UCSB. Looking for a change with 11 minutes to go here in the first period. Park. Pressure coming from Owasiak. Sends it wide, looking for Brown. Del Bonus angled it off the boards, but Perez played it forward. Carried in by Lavarado. Dispossessed. Angle and chase for himself for Owasiak. Throws it in front. Nobody home. And Santa Clara able to get the clear. Connor May. Gift for Liam Gallant back for May. Played forward for the captain. Goldser. Chips goes to chase himself. Knocks it free after Rupert tried to play it around. But on the second try, Andrew Seitz will skate it up and out. Far boards. Hard rush from Brown as Gallant twists away from him. But lost the puck to the late arriving Rupert. Brown. Pass to the slot. Couldn't connect. Hood has it now. Can't get through three Gaucho defenders. And shot in from center by Owasia. Steered away. Now Santa Clara resets. Perez angled off it by Okpish. Piagai returns it for Vieira. Back for Piagai. Turnover, look out, chance for Binniger, but it rolls behind the net, feeds it to the slot. Late arriving, Perez dangles and shoots it up over the top. A couple of his teammates already had their sticks up to celebrate. Just barely missed that one. Be a guy going down to try to block that one through the middle of the ice. Didn't work this time. It worked last night, but it didn't work this one. It almost put him completely out of the play. Binniger, pirouetting near point, gives up for Perez. Gets it back after it's stick-checked away for a moment. Okpish can't get it out. McDowell shot through traffic. Hit Perez in front. P. 
Pia guy on his wallet. Can't get it away from Boardingham, who takes it behind the net. Brendan Boardingham centers to the slot. Touched by Binniger and angled behind by Burke. Pia guy has it, though, and will pitchfork it up, out, and off the sheet. Binniger, the appeal as if there were the NHL, and that would be a delay of game. No such rule in the ACHA, sir. We talked about the differences between the ACHA and various different levels when it comes to rules. That rule being one difference. The other one, we were talking about differences between this and the NCAA level. The NCAA has an automatic no-touch icing rule. They do not play with the same hybrid icing that we do here in the ACHA as well as the NHL level. Rupert plays it to his partner, corner, and stepping up to come up with a steal, Phil Park. Park angled off it by Rupert. A second try. It's spun for Strategos along the near boards. Gaucho's unable to get the clear as Aiden Rupert shot through traffic. Oh, that bounced perilously over the stick of Burke, who was unmarked in the near slot. Everybody jams away for it in the corner. Coming away with it, Andrew Sykes throws it in front. On the save. Rebound swept to the near boards. Park holds the line. And now a hand pass called as Lavarado tried to sweep it forward for Chris Brown. And UCSB has been pinned in their own zone for about the last 90 seconds of game time. They can't even get it out over their own blue line. Santa Clara playing extremely aggressive when they lose possession of that puck. And it's turning into some chances. UCSB has got to find a way to take that puck, get possession back, take care of it, and make sure it gets out of that blue line before they're picking a puck out of the back of their own net. Off the draw, McDowell will give for Perez. Now Hood has it. Stood up at the line by Vieira. Goldser collides with Perez. Park like that on the Santa Clara bench. As Vinegar gives it away to Pia Guy. Pia Guy leading the charge. Pia Guy tries to walk through McDowell. Ian Burke closed on him like a trash compactor as. The Broncos now skated away. Hood just spins it in on Hahn. It will stick it to the far corner. Pia Guy, sensing the pressure from Binniger, plays forward for Awasiuk. Awasiuk put it in the skates of Del Bonus, held at the line by Hood. Boardingham. Boardingham waiting, passing across for Hood. AJ has to turn and recircle. Hood shoots through traffic, put it over the top. Burke activates to drive it deeper. Vieira under pressure from Boardingham. The Gauchos playing through the middle and able to get it out as far as the red line before McDowell gives for Binniger. And he'll put it back in deep on the backhand as SCU goes for the change. Lone man forward Brendan Boardingham on the forecheck. And SCU's been making quick changes all night long. They've only got about two sets of forwards and two defense pairs. They're going to have to do that in order to not wear out by the end of this game. And now the Broncos have gone offside with 6.21 to go in the first period. And Santa Clara has really warmed up to this game. UCSB, the dominant team in the early minutes, getting Frankie Nix a few more pucks than I think he saw pretty much most of last night. But for the last, I'd say, four or five minutes, it has been all Broncos, and Will Hahn has been seeing a lot more pucks. Gachos win the draw. Played forward by Gallant looking for Spears. Rupert recoils behind his own net and will play it for Park. Park off the glass. One-handed back in by Gallant, but Park with possession again. Plays forward off the skates of Lavarado. Gallant behind the net, sweeps it to the corner for Trenner. Gallant. Stub play to the middle. Park intercepts, throws it in. Ockpish. Trenner will backhand it in. Nix comes out to settle it down, but gives it away for Spears. Tried to sneak it near post. Nix was there with the blocker. Trenner walks it in front. Nix shuts the door. Okpish back to the point. Shot through traffic. Hit a skate. Backhanded by Trenner. It's a flex. Nix on his wallet. Spears jamming away. And Frankie pulls it off the goal line. Nix says no. Oh, man. Cooper Spears had to pull that puck out of his skates at the last second. If it was another 10 inches further forward, Spears had the whole net to shoot at. Just unfortunately not a good angle. Easily the best chance of the night so far here for UCSB. 
again, starting to turn the tide after getting pinned into their own zone for a little bit. That is the type of shift you want to see out of your top line now to get the offensive zone faceoff, throwing the second line immediately right over the boards. Marone and Perez on the draw. Perez won it, but the Gauchos will play it behind. Herlihy for Barone, couldn't connect. Perez under pressure from Strategos. Dimitri making a pest of himself, forces the play in behind. Emmett Rupert. Carrying it the mail through neutral ice. Angles it in and will chase himself. Wedges McDowell off the puck. Burke comes, though, and takes it away and will play it off the far sidewall out to neutral ice. And a takeaway by Kyle Perez. Perez walks in alone. Perez saved by Hahn. Jonathan quick style going to one knee and kicking the other leg pad up for number 32 in white. And now the Gauchos an odd man opportunity. Goldser shot kicked away by Nix. End to end action we go here. Goldser will carry in again. Goldser, the drop pass, Beaver tailing to get it back. Goldser threw it across the slot. Nobody was home, thought perhaps Gallant would activate from the point. But Santa Clara able to get it out and get fresh troops on the ice. Also had Tyler Barone out there at the end of his shift. Four minutes to go here in the first period as Park has it taken away by Awasia. Awasia shot, hit McDowell, who's down on two knees after taking a screamer of a wrister in his boots. Goldser for Del Bonus. McDowell wipes him out behind the net so Park can play it away. Played through Boardingham. This one will rest behind the net of Hahn and go for icing. 333, make a wish, remaining in the first period. And remember, everyone can play hockey at Ice in Paradise because Ice in Paradise offers skating school for all ages with the Galita Youth Hockey League, Monarchs Girls Ice Hockey Club, and the Santa Barbara Ice Hawks Travel Team. For more information, visit iceinparadise.org. And Cooper Spears getting double shifted here. Coach Scott Hires recognizing that arguably his star offensive player seems to have a bit of swagger here this evening. Looking very dangerous, getting a few good opportunities. He is being very aggressive, and he's generated himself quite a few chances as a result, seeing if he can get a goal out of him here. Comes up with the puck here. Spears had an assist in the game last night. The nice long find through the neutral zone to spring Owasiak for the first goal. Shot! Screamed wide by Austin Trenner. I think Nick's got just enough of that one. Rupert from the point. Comes for Trenner. Lost his footing. And it's swept behind the net. But Spears with it there. Spears pinned to the boards. Park plays it forward. Ockpish completed his hit. Now calling for the puck. Instead, the pass through the middle looking for Spears will go for an icing. And now comes the confusion of who was on the ice. Both teams playing a little bit of gamesmanship, trying to see if they can sneak a, sneak a fresh pair of legs on the ice. Referees having none of that here tonight. Remember, you cannot change players after icing the puck. Same rule as the National Hockey League. And the Gauchos win the defensive zone draw, but Hood comes up with a steal off the check behind the net by Seitz. Tuned it up high and wide. Now a giveaway in the high slot. Pass back against the grain. Unable to connect, and the Gauchos again will flip at the length. UCSB stuck with some tired legs on the ice. Long shift in the offensive zone, and we've talked at length about Santa Clara's affinity for playing the counterattack game. They're not only doing that tonight, they're also turning it into long defensive shifts for these UCSB Gauchos, pinning them into their own zone for several minutes at a time, and now you have consecutive icings that the Gauchos have to deal with with fresh legs on the ice for the Broncos. Perez wins the draw to the far boards. Goes to battle for it in the far corner. Three white shirts there, all with weary legs, though. Knocked free by Seitz. Played to the high slot, looking for Hood. Nice job by Cooper Spears. And he draws a penalty. Winning the body position and drawing another tripping call against 
Santa Clara, or I should say another penalty call against Santa Clara. The first was for a slash. This one will sit down A.J. Hood with 2.14 to go in the first period. And that's one you want to take off the ice. A.J. Hood also a very dangerous shorthanded threat. Get him off the ice for two minutes. Get your top lines back over. It looks like they're going to start with what's probably the second line here because the top line was just stuck out there for a while. UCSB looked very good on their first power play. Nothing to show for it. Let's see if they can earn something with this one. Del Bonus won the draw for Barone. Played to the point. It just fluttered over the blue and away from Vieira. Vieira couldn't get it through the defense. So on the second try, in carries Liam Gallant. Gallant the shot. Save made by Nix. Del Bonus going to the crease and giving a glove to his chest from Park to say, get away from my guy in net. Some good smooth skating there from the defenseman Gallant on that one. Just taking matters into his own hands, walking it over the blue line. UCSB gets another offensive zone faceoff and a chance to reset, try to establish that cycle again. Del Bonus and Boardingham on the draw. Boardingham wins it. Rupert tried to heave it out in front, lost it. Another swipe from Owasiak. He couldn't get connection with it, so Park plays it out and down the length. And now it's up to UCSB to try to get it back up the ice and reestablish that cycle. This is the problem that they have struggled a lot with. Once it leaves that zone, they've had a lot of trouble getting it back in and getting reset up. The Gauchos will re-rack and try once again to get it through neutral ice, but a giveaway to Perez. Perez shoots it wide. Long rebound, kicks to Vieira. Chance for the Gauchos with numbers if they hurry. I don't think they realize they had that opportunity as Owasiak bangs it behind the net a minute and 10 seconds had been used on the second power play of the game for the Gauchos. Barone dancing with it, swept away by Park. He'll curl back with it to waste precious seconds before shooting it all the way down. And UCSB going for the change here on that power play. Spears and Golds are back over. They've had energy here tonight. Less than a minute to play here in the period. About a 14-second differential between the power play and the time remaining in the period. Spears has to return to retrieve. Brings it in and drops it back. Goldser waits for traffic. Shot it into the skates of Brown. And on the second try, Brown will pop it up and almost make it up to the second level seats. But off the sheet with 20.8 remaining in the first period and six seconds remaining in the Gaucho power play. Once again, UCSB showing some good setup and some good puck movement, just not able to get that first shot past the shot blocker. A lot of credit to the Santa Clara Broncos for their willingness to get into those lanes. Ockers won the draw for Spears, who screamed it high and wide on the glove side. Santa Clara has killed the second power play of the game for the Gauchos. And Burke will retrieve far boards. And both teams look content here as Spears ridden into the near side corner. Had Ockpish alone in the high slot. Just didn't have enough time on the clock, unfortunately. And so we're scoreless after the first period of play. Second game in as many nights for ice hockey at UCSB against Santa Clara. Good show of sportsmanship between Cooper Spears and Frankie Nix as well. The two exchanging fist bumps as they head to their respective sides of the rink to head to the locker room to talk about it. And Kyle, in brief, let's talk about your thoughts for that first period before we step aside for a brief break here. I think Coach Scott Hires has a lot to be happy about with that period. UCSB showing a lot more energy here tonight. I think they got stung a little bit early and it kind of put them back on their heels last night. There's none of that same nervousness, none of that same tentativeness that seemed to come out after uh, after A.J. Hood put them up one nothing and then 2 nothing. So that seems to have disappeared tonight. UCSB recognizes that they can hang with this team. They can get some pucks by the goaltender. Santa Clara is still defending extraordinarily well. Can't really expect anything different after what we saw last night, but I think Scott Hires is going to be very happy in the locker room with it. I think he's just going to have them make a few minor changes. I do like what we've seen so far from the veterans, specifically Justin Goldster and Cooper Spears. They look like they are focused, engaged, and really in this game here tonight. Still looking for the breakthrough here after 20 minutes. The ice in Par on the ice hockey at UCSB broadcast network from Ice in Paradise. 
back after this with the Santa Rice Santa Barbara first intermission show.
First intermission here at Ice in Paradise in Goleta. He's ice hockey at UCSB and Santa Clara University scoreless. Eric Everhawk and Kyle Nicholas with you on the Center Ice Santa Barbara intermission report. Center Ice, located in Goleta, is the premier destination for hockey and figure skating equipment and apparel. On the web at centericesb.com. Center, spelled the Canadian way, C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. I think we can officially say that it is the Christian Ockpish way of doing it. Christian coming to UCSB by way of Bracebridge, Ontario. So the token Canadian on our team here. Yeah, so the Christian Ockpish way of spelling center. Ox knows what I'm saying when you say spell it the Canadian way, but just for everybody for, else. For him, it's the normal way, though. <laughs> exactly. Of course, I'm assuming he also, when he has to pay for something if he doesn't have cash or doesn't have a credit card. He's got he, some loonies on him? Well, he, or either that or he pays with a check spelled with a Q. That's just cheating at Scrabble. A 10-point letter mixed in there, you know. Well the, Gaucho, well, the Gauchos did not get cheated with their opportunities in that opening 20 minutes of play, Kyle. As we were mentioning, definitely seemed a lot better than certainly the opening 20 minutes of last night. And save for one stretch where it seemed like UCSB got caught hemmed in their own zone because of the two high four checkers from Santa Clara, stretch that went for about two, three minutes in the middle of the period, Gauchos did rather well there. I thought that was a great period for UCSB. I thought that was actually a better period than really any of the three that got played yesterday with, you know, maybe the third period yesterday could kind of come close, but... UCSB had a lot of established offensive zone time. They seem to be moving the puck better. The veterans seem to be engaged. Justin Goldzer and Cooper Spears, we've talked at length about them. They seem like they're really into this game. They're moving their feet. They're moving their legs. They're throwing their weight around, and they've been very effective so far. Coach Scott Hires has been going back and forth to them quite a bit. They played a lot in that first period. And you mentioned you got to speak with Coach Hires during the intermission. Mentioned that some of his words blue some. as the striping on the uniform. Some of his words were good. I will give him that. But the general message from Coach Hires about his squad in that opening period and what he wants to see cleaned up here for the middle frame. Well, Coach Hires was a little bit concerned about that stretch where UCSB got penned in there. The defense is just not taking a whole lot of care of the puck when they're in their own zone, and they're giving a lot of pucks away, specifically either on clearing attempts, on exit passes. They're not really taking their head up and using a split second to look and try to find a friendly stick in order to hit with that pass and possibly get themselves out over the blue line. Instead, they're giving a lot of pucks away. He'd like to see that change. But he was very happy with the way his forecheck has been working. UCSB generated 14 shots in that period to just nine for Santa Clara. So UCSB definitely had a lot better of the puck. They moved it well. Their offense was more effective. Nothing to show for it either way. They did draw two penalties, though. Cooper Spears getting both of them. UCSB and even looking pretty good on those power plays as well. Nothing to show for them, but when they did get set up and established in the Santa Clara zone, they seem to have a good ability to move the puck here tonight. So I was very encouraged by the way that looked. Coach Hires liked the way that looked as well. So hoping to continue more of that as this period, just shoring up the defense a little bit. And as we mentioned earlier, Christian Ockpish making his first appearance of the season for ice hockey at UCSB. I thought the inclusion of him in the lineup, giving the Gauchos a third center, and more importantly, a third center that they can rely on in the sense that there are now two centers that return with experience at the ACHA level to go with the play of Colin Del Bonus. It makes the squad a lot more difficult to handle for longer stretches to have those three presences down the middle. And it also makes a huge difference when you have the size of Christian Ockfish there as well. We talked about how Santa Clara is not afraid to play that physical game. They will get in your face, they will shove you around, and they will body you off the puck every opportunity they get. It's really difficult to do that to a guy like Christian Ockfish coming in at six foot one and 205 pounds. That's a big guy to try to take off the puck. Not easy to do. When you have someone like that who's very skilled at holding it and keeping possession, you got to like UCSB's chances of getting set up in the offensive zone. What was your impression on Ockpish's opening 20 minutes? I thought he was good. It didn't look like he missed much of a step. Uh, it seems like it's kind of going back and forth on where Coach Scott Hires wants to implement him. But any line that he's on is going to be some sort of a threat purely because of his ability to read the ice, check where everything's going, see what's going on, and really make a good decision with it. 
Ice hockey at UCSB and Santa Clara scoreless as we get ready for the second period of play. We remind you that our next broadcast here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network will be next Friday, the 27th of October, 9.45 p.m. start as the Gauchos face their local rival California Lutheran University Knights for the first of two this season. CLU took two of the three in the series last year, each team winning each game on their home sheet. Of course, remember, it was the Gauchos who defeated CLU to make the NCHA California Cup championship game in their inaugural season here at Ice in Paradise. As Kyle's mentioned during the intermission, the scoring summary, nothing to share with you aside from a slashing penalty taken by Cameron Burke and a tripping penalty on A.J. Hood. UCSB out shooting Santa Clara by a 14-9 margin. That'll do it for the Center Ice Santa Barbara intermission report. Center Ice located at 7127 Hollister Avenue, Suite 8 in Goleta. Well, we've become very accustomed over the last couple years to seeing these two teams play a lot of very tight, very close hockey. Not a whole lot to separate the two. The team's kind of separated by three goals yesterday, but for the most part, after UCSB got hit with those two quick ones early, it was a pretty tightly played game, most of it. I think the score sheet doesn't really do a lot of justice for how close that game was for about 55 of the 60 minutes yesterday. So, as you mentioned, Coach Hire's looking to see his side more care in breaking out of the defensive zone. Kyle, what was your impression on the offensive play in that first period? Because we mentioned it many times last night, a lot of shots coming from sharp angles. It seemed like UCSB did a better job of being patient and breaking down that box in the slot that Santa Clara has used to such great effect so far this season in going 3-1-0. I think there was better puck support from the offense coming over the blue line as well. Last night it seemed like the puck carrier was stranded as they were coming over the blue line. Just black shirts surrounding them and nowhere to move the puck. Tonight's been a lot different. It seems like whenever the puck carrier comes over the blue line, he's got a white shirt somewhat close that he can use as an outlet pass to get that pressure off of him. Teams going at opposite ends here in our second period of play as Spears spins it in behind Frankie Nix, who takes no chances with it and will freeze it. And as we've spoken at length over the course of our broadcast between the Gauchos and the Broncos about the play and the numbers that Frankie Nix has put up, I think one of the real things that separates him as well at the ACHL level is off the draw Austin Trenner, couldn't put it on net, is his puck handling ability. We'll talk about that a little bit more the next break in action we have as it's sent back in behind Nix's cage. McDowell can't get it past Okpish. Okpish rubbed off, and McDowell will play it back behind for Burke. Spears on the pressure. Gauchos electing to go with two high here. Now it'll be angled by Binniger off the boards. Piagai loses an edge. Binniger able to push it by him for Perez. Perez centered to the slot, broken up with a stick by Vieira. Binniger there to control. To the line for McDowell. Shot through traffic. Hahn never saw it. Missed wide of the far post. Perez pinned to the boards by Vieira. Lavarado moved along for Binniger. Binniger to the side of the net. Perez. Looks to center it in front, sticked away by Hahn, and now the pass to the high slot, intercepted by Spears. Gauchos ahead, two on two. Spears draws, tried to go across the slot. McDowell did well to wipe him out. Spears was looking for a call, none forthcoming. Perez for Binniger, couldn't handle it on his backhand. Goldser does. Goldser comes in offside. And Owasia came over the boards from a spot that was inside the blue line and just couldn't get back out onside. Talking a little bit about that puck handling ability of goaltender A.J. Hood. Does he remind you, Frankie or, Nix. sorry, Frankie Nix, looking at the wrong number on my roster. Does he remind you of someone kind of familiar, especially with that long curly hair goaltender that used to be in a desert not too far away from here, now up in, uh, up in the Calgary territory? 
Oh, certainly the last NHL goaltender to score a goal, one Mike Smith. One Mike Smith. Kind of familiar with that one. Maybe not so much with the long passes, but not afraid to leave his net. Goldser, slapper, patted away by Nix. Play to the point, held in by Rupert. Nix makes the save again. Aiden Rupert plays it forward. Michael Lavarado couldn't get it out as Emmett Rupert slaps it off the back glass. Thrown to the slot. Goldser stabbing at it, but it rolls in on the right pillow of Nix. And he'll stop play. Once again, that forecheck of UCSV showing its effectiveness here, getting a few turnovers. There is some wear and tear on these teams that's going to start coming into effect here probably later in this period, especially for Santa Clara when they're playing with only two full lines of both forwards and defense with UCSV playing with such a stacked bench. UCSV is definitely going to have the fresher legs out there, so fatigue is going to start to play a role pretty quickly here. Brown taken down off the play. Rupert giving him a bit of the pitchfork treatment. Near turnover here is Perez pressuring Strategos, but Dimitri able to get it ahead for Barone. Spins it around for Herlihy, who retrieves near corner. Intercepted by Park. Strategos gives him a rough ride to the end boards. Hood plays to the point. It's intercepted there by Connor May. May under fire. Can't get it through. On the third opportunity, it ultimately goes behind the Bronco net where Park will pick it up. Under pressure from Strategos. Park bounces it off the sideboards, but couldn't get it further. Then Tyler Barone will bring it back in. Barone couldn't connect with Herlihy. Perez intercepts the back pass and will switch it for Brown. Brown sends it wide for May. Was looking for Barone, intercepted by Hood. He'll hoist it off the high glass behind Hahn. And now played forward by Gallant. Herlihy. Touches it forward, Spears gives chase, but McDowell wraps it around. Lavarado for checking pressure from Trenner. And Trenner sweeps it behind the net to the near corner. Spears had it stabbed away from him to the point for Piaguy, whose backhand are intercepted by Brendan Boardingham. Boardingham carries in. Boardingham's shot blocked by the skate of Piaguy. Both go in hard to the near corner. Played along, and now Spears will carry it out. Spears is looking to angle it ahead for Trenner. McDowell intercepts. Lavarado now leads the charge in. It's blocked away. Shot wide from Boardingham, and Andrew Seitz did not miss by much on the bouncing puck at the near post. Hard around and out by the Gauchos. McDowell plays forward for Seitz. Has it taken away by Spears. Spears shoots right into the logo of Nix, who confidently holds at the top of his crease with 15.42 to go in the second. You can see that positioning of Frankie Nix as he comes way out to the top of his crease, recognizing that Spears going in over the line alone, not really any passing options. The defense not really in a good position to block it, but he's got a good look at that puck, comes way out to the top of the crease, cuts it off. Spears not with much to shoot at, puts it right into his chest. Park behind the net for Binniger. Pressure from behind by a pair of white shirts. Owasiuk and Del Bonus making life difficult for the Santa Clara zone exit. But a pass off the glass. Just hopped a stick of Hood or he would have been in alone. Once again, A.J. Hood on the offensive blue line looking for that stretch pass. Pia Guy able to backhand it forward for Del Bonus. Now shot back in. The Gaucho defensive end. Pia Guy. Returns it for Vieira. Boy, at this point, these two have to feel like they know what each other is going to do on the sheet with their eyes closed as it's iced. Pass goes too long. But P.I. and Vieira have played together since the inaugural season here at Ice in Paradise. And in watching and going back and looking at the post for the Facebook live stream, saw a couple other names from the past, from the first year of the Ice in Paradise era, the NCHA season. Pontus Johnson and Keith Saito, pair of defensemen for the Gauchos who checked in the, on the broadcast. Good to see former ice hockey at UCSB teammates checking in and keeping tabs on the program. Especially Pontus Johnson hailing from Sweden. 
Delbonis plays forward for Goldser. Goldser, it's chipped away from him at the point, and now the Gauchos have to face a three on two. Sent back for a slapper from the point by Andrew Seitz that Han has without much issue. Have to figure that Coach Jackson Morgus may have wanted to see his side do better coming in three on two. Yeah, you'd probably like to get a little bit better of a shot than that one. Relatively routine for Han, nonetheless comes out to the top of the crease, takes it right into that chest protector, and as we talked about yesterday, it just sticks to him. Nothing popping right back out. No hassle. Easy save. Gauchos will take the face off in their own end. Barone and Boardingham on the draw. Stalemated. And a hand pass called here as Strategos knocked it down. Interesting that that was called and it's staying in the Gaucho end, considering that that was in the defensive zone. Normally that is the one place where you can legally hand pass as long as it starts and ends in the defensive zone. So I'm a little curious why that one was blown down. I think, uh, think Coach Scott Hires wants an explanation for that as well. So the officials will go over, speak with the second year UCSB head coach and assistant coach Ben Brecker. And also mentioning some of the folks that have been such loyal viewers of ice hockey at UCSB. Scott's mom, Elka, Never misses a game, and we're certainly happy to have her. As off the draw, McDowell's shot deflected in the high slot, and Santa Clara goes ahead 1-0. Not much goaltender Hahn can do. It's that deflection in the high slot that just tips it up and over the glove of goaltender Hahn. A bit of an unlucky bounce, and just that quickly, UCSB finds themselves behind. Not really, I would say, a deserved a deserved. Uh, I don't want to say a desert, undeserved lead for Santa Clara. They've had a very good game as well, but I think UCSB deserves a little bit better of a fate than to be down right now. But again, some adversity they're going to have to learn to overcome here. Very talented, very good defensive team for the Broncos. As of right now, we'll credit that goal to Mark McDowell. Although be sure to visit UCSBHockey.com and check our official box score tomorrow morning for the match. So UCSB has to chase now with 14 minutes to play in the second period as after the play, Cameron Burke goes to ice Emmett Rupert, sending him there, and that may send Rupert to the sin bin. And Rupert once again got in a little bit of penalty trouble last night for some after-the-whistle physicality, and I think he's going to get probably an elbowing penalty here, and UCSB is going to have to kill their first of the night. Those are not penalties you like to see taken when you are a head coach. I'm sure Sco Coach Scott Hires is going to have some words for Rupert when he gets back to the bench after that one. That is not a penalty you want to see your team take, especially after giving up the go-ahead goal. So Santa Clara to their first power play of the evening. The Gauchos were a perfect 4-for-4 four four on the kill last night. Off the draw, played to the point, intercepted by Park. Gives it up for Hood. Hood back for Park. Returns for Hood. Hood shot through traffic, hit a skate, skipped to the near boards. Rupert curls around with it. Rupert, too strong, looking for Hood. This one will spin all the way back into the Santa Clara end. And worth noting, Cooper Spears out there on the penalty kill off that faceoff. He went bolting for the opposite blue line. Shorthanded threat for the Gauchos to try to even this one up. Park carries in. Park goes to the net, runs into Hahn, and we have a whistle and a stoppage in play, and... Not sure what the call was, trying to look down for the referee. I think it probably should be a face-off that stays here. Of course, Kyle, you've mentioned that the crease violation is a rule that you'll see enforced at the ACHA level. That is true. That's probably actually what wound up getting called. So Okpish wins the defensive zone draw. Gauchos unable to get it out on the second try. Okpish. We'll play it forward. And Spears had stopped up on the boards and just wasn't able to get accelerating to the point where he could get over there and retrieve that pass. Otherwise, he was gone. Hood carries in, one on two. Takes it wide on his backhand. Tries to walk it in front. Han sealed at the far post. And Liam Gallant will send it out through the middle. Awasiak given chase. Nicks out. Plays it off the boards. 
Goes out to neutralize. Kick forward. Lavarado. Binniger swept it in. Broncos had to wait to get onside, so it's sent back out by UCSB with 35 seconds remaining on the Bronco power play. McDowell, who we're currently crediting with the first goal of the game. Lavarado back for McDowell. His shot from the point. Wide. Boardingham gives for Burke. Back for Boardingham. Boardingham shot on the save. Rebound sits for Binniger, who brings it behind the net. Binniger for McDowell. Shot on the save, and he holds the rebound as it rolled down his blocker right in front of him like a snowball coming downhill. Bit of an awkward shot going out towards that blocker side shoulder. Hahn did very well to handle that one and keep it right in front of him so he could quickly jump on top of it. That's a really hard one to get that puck to stick to you, so good goaltending from Hahn to keep that one settled. Seven seconds now left on this power play for the Santa Clara Broncos. 12.06 to go here in the second period as Del Bonus on the draw. Ties it up with Boardingham, but off the draw. Sent wide by Lavarado. And angled out by Awasiak, and the Gauchos have killed off the first Bronco power play of the evening. McDowell shot on the save, handled and held with ease. Once again, if Han gets nothing but that type of a shot for the rest of the night, you got to like his chances of not letting another one in there. That first one that went in, obvious tip from the high slot, not a lot you can do when you're setting up and it get, the direction gets changed on you that quickly. But UCSB taking a bit of a page out of Santa Clara's book here this evening. They are forcing everything from the Broncos offensively to, for the most part to come from the outside or from out high where it's a fairly routine save for the goaltender. Near post, Perez tries the jam play. Spun around and scores on the rebound. Han did all he could, dropping his stick, reaching back against the grain with the blocker. But Perez, the quick wraparound and backhand stuff for post. 2-0 Santa Clara. And the defense a little slow to react to that one as well. It was 5-on-5, five five, but no one thought to get to the far post as Perez just quickly went around and wrapped it. Not a whole lot Han could do after making that first save, finding himself down and out. The defense not able to cover the far post, and suddenly UCSB finds themselves down a pair quickly despite playing a pretty solid game here so far this evening. Santa Clara seeming to get that offense moving. Vieira shoots it in. Rupert takes a heavy hit from Hurley. Turnover in front. Nix makes this save on the wheeling shot from Barone. Broncos carry out. Lavarado drops it back for Boardingham. High and wide of the blocker. Kicks back to the point. Rupert. Hurley delivers a heavy hit and moves the puck forward. Not bad for someone listed at 5'10", 180. Pia Guy playing the angle with Boardingham on his back, sweeps it to the point, held in there by Sites for a moment, but Strategos able to angle out. Vieira takes the overextended stretch pass, switches for Pia Guy, and shot back in, Broncos. Delayed offside as Seitz has to check up. Pia guy wide for Vieira. Tried to stretch it through the middle. Now a nice turn from Stratigos to Barone. Barone curls. Back to the point for Pia guy. Hood chipped it free, gets the forward feed from Burke. Stood up by Rupert. Pia guy takes the hit to move it along to Emmett. Now Spears heard the call for the puck from Okpish. Tried to return it to him, but it's deflected and taken away. Hood stood up by Rupert, played it to the slot, knocked down by Spears. Went between the legs like Magic Johnson to put it on his tape, but his angled pass looking for Okpish too far and goes for icing with 9.53 to go in the second period. A little bit of some answer, Allen Iverson. Uh, some crossovers on that one. Some fancy moves from Cougar Spears. I wonder if he's got any uh, any basketball experience in that past as well as the uh, as well as many years of hockey. Somehow I don't think he went to the Michael Jordan elite camp that was held at the Thunderdome this summer. Uh, something tells me probably not, but you never know. He did work out quite a bit. 
McDowell shot from the point, blockered away by Hahn. Piagai ahead for Spears. Spears carries in. Spears shot from the sharp angle, saved by Nix. Rebound jam play, tried once, twice. And Nix had an answer for both Austin Trenner and Chris Awasia. Austin Trenner starting to get down to the front of the net once again. Makes his living down there. Had a great game yesterday, giving the defense for the Broncos some fits, trying to handle him down there. Begging your pardon on the attempted jam. That was Michael Hurley as Awasiak is over the boards with Colin Del Bonus and Justin Goldser now. It's a sweet font that UCSB uses, but some of the numbers just look too similar. Yeah, especially when they got that jersey tucked into the back of the pants as well, and you kind of only see half of it. It's a little misleading. Why, oh, why did Wayne Gretzky have to make tucking the jersey cool? Yeah, and then Alex Ovechkin followed him up and maybe did it even worse. Offensive zone draw for the Gauchos. And now a odd man break as Santa Clara tries his own. Boardingham has it sweep checked away by Emmett Rupert. Perfect play from Rupert to get down and get that stick in the right spot. And now McGroney in and helping as Rupert tangled up. Looks like he was getting uh, getting the business given him to given to him down in that corner. Andrew Seitz engaged. Boardingham and McDowell came late. I wonder if we're going to get any penalties out of this one. It looks like we're going to get one, possibly two, possibly one on each side. Really, I think that makes sense. Yeah, it sounds about right. McGroney was the second man in for UCSB, and Seitz was the one pulling at the helmet. You can tell that the size of Emmett Rupert has really started to get to Santa Clara. You know he likes to play that physical game. We've seen it, and it's gotten him into a little bit of penalty trouble. But at the same time, you get a guy that big who's not afraid to throw that body around like Rupert is, it's really hard to play against him knowing you're going to take a crunching hit every time you come near it. Kind of a similar thing to playing against Dimitri P guy, only add a few inches in height and a few extra pounds on top of it. So currently, the scoreboard shows two minutes aside. I think we're going to get some four-on-four -four hockey, which we did not get yesterday in instances of coincidental minors. Mayhaps because it occurred after the whistle? Might be. Sometimes it's also a little bit up to the official's opinion. If the referees that deem that it really didn't affect the play too much, they might keep it five-on-five. -five. Other times... Sometimes they like to let it go four on four. This is one of the latter. And that is absolutely where the play was with the puck battle in the corner. So now, plenty of open ice, and the Gauchos are going to give it up as it's taken like down Aiden Rupert. And man, Chris Owasiak cannot believe this one, but he'll have to sit for two minutes here. And that's a good holding call. Just got that hand free a little bit, took the man down along the boards. May have thought that it was a clean hit, but it was just enough to interfere. And now it's a dangerous four on three opportunity for the next minute and 39 seconds. Gaucho's throwing, looks like too many men over the board right now. Goldster cruising back over to the bench as it'll be Spears called upon for the kill here. Burke back to the line for McDowell. He opened the scoring for Santa Clara. Looking for it back from Burke. Gives it to him. Loads, fires. Looking for the tip with Perez in front. Got taken down by Pia Guy. Burke reloads. Pass across the slot for Hood. Hood to the point for McDowell. McDowell for Hood. Perez setting the screen in front. Han lost an edge. Pia Guy taken down by Perez. And, and we're we going to have three on three as the interference call here. It's almost like some NHL overtime for the next minute and 10 seconds. Good penalty killing from the Gauchos on that one. Not sure what the official's talking about, but it is definitely going to be Kyle Perez headed to the sin bin for the takedown. And now there is a lot of open ice out there. 
And you can bet that Cooper Spears is jazzed right now. He has been waiting for this all night long. Now has some real space to get those legs going. If UCSB can feed him the puck, he's going to really be gunning for a good opportunity in on Frankie Nicks. This is where someone like Andrew Vieira, with his roller hockey experience and his offensive proclivity, can be a real advantage for the Gauchos on the backhand, although he loses an edge. Goes in hard to the end boards. McDowell plays forward for Burke. Burke in the slot. Angled away. Does a nice job to lift the stick of Spears, but lost the puck. Three abreast skate the Gauchos. Spears will carry in himself. Give back for Piagai. Demo walks in. Piagai shoots. He hit the post. Oh, he hit it off the outside post. Everyone in the building thinks that one's in the net. Hood back the other way. Two on one. He hits the pipe as well. Oh, and end to end we go. Iron is for sale everywhere. Hood, another chance. Pass across. Blocked away in front of the net. And a hand pass on Vieira as Burke tried to get it through the down gaucho defender for Hood on the opposite side of the crease. I'm going to try at intermission to get an explanation on the rules for this because that's the second hand pass in a row in the defensive zone that has been called on UCSB. I don't know if that's an ACHA rule or maybe just like a general college hockey rule, but that is normally supposed to be a legal play, and it's the second time in a row it's been blown down. So I'd like to know if that's a rule difference or kind of what's going on there. It's legal in the NCAA, I can tell you that much, but 740 remains in the second period, 22 seconds, still in three on three. It remains Spears out there for the Gauchos, the defensemen now, Gallant and Rupert. Off the draw, Park controls for Santa Clara. Gives it up far corner for Aiden Rupert, tried to return it to him. Went into the skates of Spears. Now Cooper comes up with the steal. There's a head on a breakaway. Spears in, shoots it up high. He was looking blocker side. And I think Boardingham got back in just enough time to get a stick on that puck before Spears could really let it go just to tip it over the top. Boardingham showing a lot of speed to get back and cut off that breakaway from Spears. And you know Spears was looking for that one as well. The initial roughing minors to... Adam McGroney and Andrew Seitz have expired. So in 18 seconds, the Gauchos will have 29 seconds of power play, their third power play of the evening, abbreviated as it may be. Draw one by Del Bonus back to the point. Switched. Rupert couldn't get good wood on it. Now walking off the boards, Barone carries Barone. Sticked away by Nix. And the Gauchos with the abbreviated power play now. Park curls back. Finds Boardingham, who shoots at the length of the sheet. Hahn has it hop off his heel. But Rupert back to retrieve. Stretch pass. Connects with Awasia, who's connected with at the line as it's played up into the fans. And nice catch made by the gentleman in the gray hat there in the first row. But second night Jesse in a row. Jesse Gutierrez, put him on camera. Give him some love. That's right. Good hands. Second night in a row. We've gotten a pretty nice outfield fly catch from a, uh, from a fan out here watching that one yesterday that almost nailed us here in the broadcast position. I would have had it. Don't I, tell I'm anybody glad you that, that I was kind of leaning away while reaching out. I'm glad you would have because I probably wouldn't. Back to even strength with 6.20 to go here in the second Heads period. Heads up in the bench. And another face-off forthcoming in the attack zone for ice hockey at UCSB. And remember, Ice in Paradise is the cool place to skate in Goleta. Public skating is available every day with Learn to Skate and Skating School programs, youth and adult hockey leagues, and more. Open for classes, private parties, Head to iceinparadise.org to learn more. A.J. Hood off the stretch pass. Couldn't get through Piagai, who wings it around for Goldser. Perez had it for a moment. Now Binniger knocks it for Perez. Plays for Hood in the high slot. Another touch for Burke. Shoots. High of Hans Blocker off the back window. Perez picks it up. 
And we'll give for Binniger. Returns for Perez. Looking to get it back to him. Kicked away by Del Bonus. Played now for Awasiuk. Awasiuk carries in up the far boards. Off the play. We have leave Del Bonus and Burke both going down. And I wonder how we're going to have this officiated here. It looks like a hold and a cross check forthcoming. I think we're going to see a little bit more of that four on four play. And you have to think that favors the way Cooper Spears is skating right now. Got that opportunity in three on three. So looks like just one going into the box and it's UCSB. Phil Park having a few questions for the officiating crew. Captain of the Santa Clara Broncos here. Burke was trying to hide on the bench, looking for an explanation here from the official with 534. Can't put him in the box if the referee doesn't know where he is, right? So cross-checking on Del Bonus. And they continue to yammer at each other in the penalty box. The hold on Burke. More four-on-four four hockey here. Okpish is out there with Spears, as well as Piagai. The official comes back to tell the box boys to settle. Defensive zone draw won by Perez. Park for Perez. Tried to play it forward. Hit the pants of Vieira. Now Perez with it. Shot from the top of the near circle. Gathered and held by Hahn. Once again, another easy one that Hahn will take. Got to give a lot of credit to this officiating crew. Aside from those hand passes, that may be just a rule difference that I don't know about. Done a very good job of keeping control of this game. Second games in as many nights between two teams playing. Series that you see quite a bit in the ACHA. There's always a lot of animosity in the second night. Usually starts building up in the first game. Second night, it usually all comes out. Pia guy with the punishing hit there, showing some of that animosity as Spears dances his way through neutral ice. Spears with room. Spears again. Headhunter shot. Looking for that high blocker side. Couldn't put it on frame. Boy, he didn't miss by much either. That was about three inches over the crossbar. Puck bounces to him again. He'll pick it up behind the net, backhanded in front. Back to the line, Rupert. Shoots high and wide with the wrister, but again, it lands on the tape at number 22. Brock Pish in the slot. Ripped it wide of the near post. Rupert again. Shoots and it sticks to Nix. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm about to say. I say it quite a bit whenever I'm watching hockey. You miss 100% of the shots that you miss. Seems kind of fairly straightforward, but those are opportunities where you've got to get the puck on net. You cannot score a goal if you do not make the goaltender either make a save or make the mistake and let it past him. And it speaks to the criterion when you look for advanced stats nowadays as the puck sent the length of the sheet for the icing. There's a reason why teams track the shot attempts or the Corsi stat just to see how many pucks in general are being put towards the net. So if a team's blocking it or if they're missing, gives them a better idea of the flow of the offense thus far. We're not that analytic heavy on this broadcast, but UCSB will, sure, will certainly be looking to put more of those opportunities one-on-one -on, -one on net. Icing is waved as Boardingham had flown the zone. Rupert touched it forward. Now Goldser took the feed from Trenner. Goldser carries in. 30 seconds remain in four-on-four. Four. McGroney lost an edge and the puck. Boardingham in one-on-one -on -one with Rupert. Has a late arriver in Brown. Just couldn't get the pass to him off the tip of the stick. 
Brown with it. Played it wide for Boardingham. He was going off to the bench. Shot from the point. Save made by Hahn. That's a tricky toe stop on Seitz with the man in front. Gauchos send it the length of the ice with 3.41 to go in the second period. Seven seconds in four on four. And Justin Goldzer was trying to get off the ice. That He's been out here for this entire four on four stretch. When that pass went screaming toward him, he was trying to wave, don't pass it to me, I need to get off. Almost a two minute shift here and now he's got to take this defensive zone face off. Perez wins it to Binniger, but couldn't keep control of it. Played in behind for McGroney. Teams are back to five aside as Hood. The pestering from Perez with the puck and will wheel it behind the net. Hood angles off the boards for a slapper from the point. Kicked away by Hahn off the park pill. Barone ahead for Goldser. Drops back for Barone, returns for Goldser. Deflected by Park behind the net. He'll go and retrieve there. As Hood played it off the boards looking for himself. Barone held it in on the second try. It's chopped out by Rupert. Aiden Rupert with it on his tape again. Gallant. Park now. Emmett Rupert. Nice pass forward for Barone. Gauchos, three on two. Barone crosses the slot. Barone shoots. They keep looking at Nix's blocker. Bounces back out in front and just wide. Wacky bounce off the end glass. And boy, the Gauchos just can't buy a puck past Nix now. Say, say, say a team needs a bounce usually to get it. Gauchos have been getting a few bounces, but they're just not quite going the way they need them to. Couple of shots just missing the net. That one falling right into the crease with no one around. Just no one can get a stick on it to put it past Knicks and into the empty net. Santa Clara controls off the draw. Perez sends it wide for Hood. One on one with Gallant. Shot high over the top. Long rebound kicks for Barone. Barone with Hurley coming late. Barone stops in the near corner. Behind for Hurley. Return for Barone. Stratego scores to the front of the net. It's back to the point. The shot is blocked. Look out, cook out, two on one. Boardingham waits, shoots, and Hahn makes the save. Well played on the defense on that one from Gallant. Getting in that passing lane, keeping the stick there, and completely cutting off that lane that would have gone right over to the most dangerous player on the ice. A.J. Hood was sitting there with a 4 by 6 and had no way of getting that puck. Perfect defense makes it a fairly routine save for Hahn. Del Bonus on the defensive zone draw for the Gauchos. Controlled by Boardingham. Back to the point. Burke does well to hold it in. He'll angle it deeper for Dimitri Piagai. He plays it around. Goldser stops it up. Tries to swing it wide. Awasiuk. Nix. Slows and shoots it forward for Brown, who plays it out to neutral territory. Heaved back in. Brown has it. Stick checked away by Awasia. Continues to push forward with Burke angling it off the glass. Pia Guy played it out, but Brown brings it in offside. Interesting that it was the orange armbanded referee who called that one. And I think the reason he did is that he had to reach behind him to bring that puck over the line so his skates fully crossed before the stick with the puck did. And unfortunately, that means he drew himself offside. A little bit of an equipment adjustment here for Hahn. Minute 14 remaining in the middle frame that has seen Santa Clara score twice. Couches have had their opportunities, just haven't been able to hit the target on a couple breakaways. Boardingham tried to play it to the slot, looking for Lavarado. Instead, Piagai twists it around to the far point. McDowell plays it behind the net. Piagai. Elwasia. 
switches. Rinkin gives for Goldser. Goldser tries the return feed to the slot. Del Bonus just couldn't get it. Perez poked it free from Owasiuk. And Burke plays it up and out off the back netting. 33.4 before the second intermission. And UCSB has got to be thinking, if we can just get one right here, right before the end of the period, those late goals tend to be the daggers when it comes to turning momentum in games. This is a prime opportunity for UCSB, and Coach Hires recognizes that for Rose's number one line over the boards immediately. Ockpish spears the forwards with Trenner. Behind the net it goes. Rupert lost an edge, but long lob pass. Finds A.J. Hood in all alone. Hood draws. Hahn makes the left pad save with a toe. And Hahn doesn't buy that fake for a second. Park switches for Rupert. Binniger for Perez. His shot. Han the juggle, the catch, and the hold with a second remaining. And Han coming up with two big saves at the end of the period. We just spoke about how dangerous those end of period goals can be. The UCSB already down a pair. You have a feeling if that third one would have gone in, would have put a really grim cloud over the head of the start of the third period. Santa Clara opting to pull their goaltender with one second left to try to get that sixth man out and get one more shot. Wouldn't surprise me if Ockfish just tries to freeze this puck. Off and the draw, Boardingham tried to go near post. Hahn had none of it. And so, with 40 minutes played, once again, the Gauchos will be chasing as we enter the final frame thanks to a pair of goals, a shot from the point by Mark McDowell, who we're currently crediting with the goal, but it did take a deflection in the high slot. And then Kyle Perez on a rebound wraparound, sending us to the showers with Santa Clara again ahead of ice hockey at UCSB. Well, UCSB once again, I thought, played a pretty good period that time out. Unfortunately, once again, nothing to show for it. They are getting their chances, though. It's just a matter of making sure that they hit the net with all of them. Spears with a couple breakaways. He is clearly engaged in this game. I think UCSB has a lot that they can be encouraged with. But once again, they find themselves in the same position as yesterday, trailing by more than one goal going into that third period. They're going to need to find some life quickly when we come back. We will step aside, and when we return, we'll bring you the Center Ice Santa Barbara second intermission report. Where we recap the score, as well as catch some additional analysis and discussion with color commentator Kyle Nicholas. We remind you, get social with Ice Hockey at UCSB. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ice hockey UCSB. Follow at UCSB Ice Hockey on Twitter and Instagram, UCSB Ice Hockey. And remember, when you're here at Ice in Paradise, use the special Ice Hockey at UCSB Snapchat filter. Ice Hockey at UCSB is on every major social media platform, so there's no excuse for you to not get social with your Gaucho Hockey program. UCSB trails it 2-0. Second intermission here from Ice in Paradise in Goleta on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network.
Second intermission here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network from Ice in Paradise in Goleta. It's the Center Ice Santa Barbara second intermission report on the web at centericesb.com. Center spelled the Canadian way, C-E-N-T-R-E. And Kyle Nicholas, my color commentator, Eric Ebelhawk, myself, you did a little bit of sleuthing during the intermission here to find out about a rule issue that not only you, but the Gauchos team was a little bit incredulous about. I think pretty much everyone in the building was incredulous about it. We're talking about differences in rules, once again, between the ACHA level, the NCAA level. This is a difference with just about every other level anywhere else in the world. Hand passes in the ACHA are officially illegal in all three zones. No hand passes anywhere on the ice are legal. So good to know going forward because that is a big difference and that is going to make a huge, huge strategy change for a lot of teams. The way they play defense, not having that as an option to get pucks back out of their own end. Huge for strategy. The huge difference in the game right now, Kyle, the two goals put on the scoreboard by Santa Clara in that second period. And it really felt like the goal that again, we're currently crediting to Mark McDowell, but it definitely took a deflection in the high slot. It was McDowell's shot that ultimately found its way home. That seemed to change the complexion of the game. The Gauchos maybe getting a bit more aggressive. It gave Santa Clara a lot more opportunities in that second period than they had in the first. Well, when you go down to a team like Santa Clara, team that's going to play such staunch defense and try to keep everything away from the front of the net, you're going to have to start taking a few more risks, and you're going to see that a lot more here in the third period. Some caution is going to have to go to the winds, but when that happens, you leave yourself vulnerable to counterattacks, and we've seen how strong this Santa Clara team can be. They have a lot of speed, especially noticing tonight Brendan boarding them. That guy's got some wheels. He can really bring that thing up the ice, listed as a five foot ten forward doing really a lot of yeoman's work as a defenseman so far here tonight, but you know he's going to be looking to carry that one back up. Yeah, and Boardingham has shown over the course of his career with Santa Clara University that he has that scoring touch. In the three games against the Gauchos, he has a goal and an assist. This is his fourth year with the program. Last year, he led the team with seven goals in the 11 games played. He had eight goals the previous two seasons in Division Three competition for the Broncos in 25 games played in 2015-16 and 2014-15. And in the second game in as many nights, Kyle, that's where you see the depth really starting to shine through. And that's something where you have to figure if the Gauchos can get things cleaned up and just bear down in that final attacking third, they've had the opportunities. They just haven't gotten the bounces and haven't finally found that back of the net yet tonight against Bronco goalie Frankie Nix. Well, last night it took them until early in the third period to finally get one past him. It might be a similar story here tonight. And once again, you have this feeling that if the Gauchos can get a quick one, anything can happen here tonight. It does come down to the fact that they do have to make sure that they're getting their shots on goal. They had quite a few opportunities that period that went by the wayside purely because the shooter didn't even force Frankie Nix to make the, make the save or give him the opportunity to make the mistake to allow that puck through. The UCSB just needs to make sure they're hitting the net with their shots, and if they can do that, they're going to have a much better opportunity at squeaking one through. Is there anything else that you want to see in the offensive zone as far as chance generation for the Gauchos? I like the way UCSB looks when they're getting players to the front of the net. Austin Trenner going there all night long. I've noticed Colin Del Bonis also going there as well. Those seem to be the only two guys that are really targeting that spot every time they go up the ice, though. UCSB needs to throw some caution to the winds, and they need to send a man there in between the defensemen to take a little bit of punishment, but to raise a little bit of hell in there and to get some traffic in front, because when UCSB does that, they've had a lot more success at generating chances and getting some rebounds off of Frankie Nix. We remind you, our next broadcast will come to you Friday night, the 27th of October, 9.45 scheduled start between the Gauchos 
and California Lutheran University Knights. The last thing we do here on the Center Ice Intermission Report is get you the scoring summary in the second period. Mark McDowell with the opening goal for Santa Clara. 6.46 of the second period. And then it was Kyle Perez at the 8.18 mark to make it 2-0 in that period. Santa Clara outshoots UCSB by a 15 to 12 margin. The Gauchos with 26 shots so far in the game versus 24 for the Broncos. UCSB is 0 for 3 on the power play. One of those was abbreviated. Santa Clara 0 for 1 on the power play. Their only opportunity with the extra man was cut short by a penalty. Santa Rice, Santa Barbara, the premier destination for hockey and figure skating equipment and apparel at 7127 Hollister Avenue, Suite 8 in Goleta. I have really liked the way UCSB has played their transition game here tonight. They just need to make sure that they can clean up that breakout just a little bit more, make sure they're getting passes away from the active defense for Santa Clara. They are quick. They're very very attentive to pucks, especially pucks that get out towards their area on the blue line. They don't let a lot out, but it, when UCSB has managed to get pucks past them, they are generating rush chances here tonight. Those are some of the most dangerous chances that you can face as a goaltender. If UCSB can keep that up and get a few quickly here in the third period. you got to like their chances of getting one back and cutting this lead down. One of Kyle's keys for the game tonight, the first was to have one of the veterans step up I'm going to put you on the spot here, Kyle. Which veteran do you think of the seven returning players for the Gauchos is the one to have that breakthrough moment here in the final 20 minutes of regulation? Well, based on what we've seen through the first 40 minutes, it's definitely been a Cooper Spears game. He has been all over the ice, almost trying to single-handedly will that puck over the line and into the net. He is trying to get this team going. He's been flying. I would look forward to seeing what he can do here in this third period, but the thing is, he's got to be able to keep it in control don't take any penalties and make sure that you are getting those shots on net when you do get that opportunity. Speaking of those keys as well, I think another one we deserve to talk about. So far, A.J. Hood off the score sheet through two periods. Broncos control the draw to begin the third period of play. And Michael Hurley carries into the Broncos zone. Feeds the high slot. Her own shot deflected wide. Stratego's got a, trip up, got a tip on it. That'll be carried back the other way by Aiden Rupert. Rupert, hard off the end boards behind Hahn. It's chipped around, Strategos. Lost it on the hopping puck to Boardingham. Shot in behind by Park. Seitz couldn't control. Hurley, he has it again for the Gauchos. Strategos. Rupert lost an edge, but a nice sweep with the stick. Able to send it wide. Barone brings it in. Barone to the slot. It's through, Nix. Had to flare it away at the last second with a stick. Vieira from the line, deflected wide by Strategos. Hurley gives chase as it's stubbed out by Seitz for Boardingham. Boardingham, Piagai rides him into the boards and separates him from the puck for Barone. Barone off the glass. Gathered in by Cooper Spears. Shoots, shoulder save by Nix. The rebound bounced over the blade of Barone. Now ahead for Hood. Hood, two on two with Perez. Pirouette's bottom of the near circle, plays back, post score! Dakota Binniger. There's the big goal to make it a three goal game for Santa Clara, a minute and 23 seconds into the third. And bad broadcaster says the star player kept off the score sheet. Who gets the primary assist? It's a virtually solo effort from A.J. Hood to carry that puck in from the blue line, stop up and recognize that he had an uncovered vinegar on the far post for a tap-in goal. UCSB's defense got lulled to sleep just a little bit. And it looks like, are we going to be getting a goaltending change? I think we might be. UCSB, we're going to get the first appearance of the season from Lennon Karma. Have to feel for Han on that one. Hardly his fault. No, absolutely not. Nothing he could have done about that. His defense fell asleep on him for sure. So it'd be 25 shots faced by Han tonight. With 18:37 to go here in the third, he comes out and makes way. That'll be important for calculating his goals against average later, if I'm not mistaken. Right, you are, Kyle. 
But Gauchos in a right pickle here as Karma immediately tested by Cameron Burke makes the save. High slapper. Flared high and wide by the freshman from Temecula. Cooper Spears backhands it into the offensive end. Nix plays it around. McBroney will hold it up there. Sent to the slot. Nobody home. Spears nearly stole it, but Lavarado pitching wedges it forward for Chris Brown. Tried to return it for Boardingham. Missed it behind him. Now Rupert on the dump in. Park takes the hit from Rupert to move it along for Binniger. Held it at the point. Shot tipped. Stick by Nix prevented it from getting through to Trenner. Now Hood, the heave all the way down the sheet. And it's good for icing with Gallant racing back. A couple strides ahead of Binniger, whose goal early here in this third period has completely changed the complexion. Absolutely. And you got to feel for Lennon Karma also coming in right now. The 6'2 junior listed at 215 pounds. Big goaltender standing in net, hometown from Temecula, California. You got to feel for him getting thrown in right then and there and having to face two shots quickly. Kind of an out of a frying pan and into the fire moment here for the UCSB backup. He is a statistics major, so if I have any issue calculating goals against average, I'll just ask him. I'm sure he'll be happy to correct you and maybe give himself a few more points in that save percentage. Owasiuk will carry out for the Gauchos. Gives for Del Bonus. Del Bonus. Three Broncos near him. Sent it to the front. Nick speared it wide. Slapper. Rebound sitting there from Gallant. Boy, that stung Nix. Elwasiak again. For Del Bonus behind the net. Tried to backhand it in front. Park sealed it to the end boards. And now Hood tried to heave it out from the line. The shot by May deflects. And ultimately, it'll be played out by Park for Hood near side. Hood in, pass, back post, couldn't connect with Park. Long rebound, chips out to neutral ice. Well, Burke will just flip it back in. Paid the price to do so. The Gauchos try to angle it out off the near side boards. Held up by Boardingham, and he'll bloop it back in. And you can tell already that Santa Clara going into that road game mode of just working off the clock, getting pucks in deep, and not letting Santa Barbara out of their own end. You remember, they are short benched here, so that is the type of game that's going to wear UCSB out, keep the legs fresh for Santa Clara if they can keep those shifts short and just work the clock down so they can lock these two points away. Over four minutes played here in the third period as Boardingham brings it into the zone, drops back for Brown, who spins it around to the far side wall. Hit from behind, taken by Owasiak, but moved forward. Backhand by Goldser to no one in particular, but the puck comes in. Goldser feeds it in front, all alone. What a save by Nick, shutting down Hurley. Oh, Hurley, he just seemed to lose his balance at the moment of truth. I don't think he expected that pass to get to him so cleanly or for him to have that much time. Great presence of mind from Nix, who hasn't been tested that quick that much in that quite a while it's tough to stay focused and he's equal to the task hood takes the feet ahead from perez dips the shoulder karma flares it away to the backboards perez though tries to walk it out sneak it near post pia guy takes the return feed plays it along for strategos to the point for park steps past him park Knocked away from him by Pia Guy, but it lands on the blade of Perez. Tries to play back door. Rupert couldn't get the full composite on it. Now it's chipped forward. Here comes Tyler Barone. Two on two are the Gauchos. Barone rags it wide. For Strategos in front, tried to tap it back from him. The defense from behind slowed it and cleared it. And a good presence of mind once again from Nix. It was Nix's stick that came out and broke that pass up, recognizing that that's where the pass was going. Spears with it, shoots it in on Nix. Handcuffed him a bit, but he drops down to freeze it with 14-17 to go in the third period. And you get the feeling that that third goal may have just been a real emotional dagger for ice hockey at UCSB, who had done so well 
to hang with the Santa Clara team, and they still have nothing to show for it to this point. I think they've actually played an even better game here tonight than they did yesterday. It's just they can't seem to find a way to get a puck over the goal line. Defensive zone draw controlled by the Broncos. Dug free for a moment by Trenner. And now Spears on the steal. Feed to the slot. Akpish shoots! Hit the outside of the post. Big hit delivered by Spears as Gallant tried to chip it back in deeper. McDowell has it knocked away from him. Played along the boards just past Gallant. And the Gauchos have to tag up as Burke wings it around. Couldn't get the clear. Akpish with it. Stepping in. Shoots. Saved by Nix. Juggled the rebound a bit as it looked to hit him on the cuff slightly above the top of the blocker but he's able to hold for the faceoff. And Nix was about five feet out on top of his crease when he made that save. You want to talk about aggressive goaltending. That's about as aggressive as I think I've ever seen. We talked a little bit about how he kind of reminds you of Mike Smith. He doesn't quite have the same stature as the former Arizona Coyotes goaltender. A little bit more Jonathan Quick sized, and you have to argue, kind of played a Jonathan Quick style getting out on top of the crease and playing aggressive there. Looks like the far post may be off its mooring right now as the Gauchos battle for the puck in the far corner. Perez controls it and plays ahead for Hood. Yeah, just barely. Good eye. Hood sent wide by Rupert. Steps back to the high slot. Plays back for Park in the neutral zone. Aiden Rupert angles it in. Gallant sensing the pressure. Played it along for Awasia. Del Bonus gives it forward for Rupert to angle it in. Too far for gold, sir. Vinegar plays it to the line. It just gets through Gallant, but he does a nice job of slowing up and preventing Park from playing it forward for guess who? A.J. Hood, who is in leak-out mode. And he's going to stay there for the rest of the game, just looking for another insurance goal. Gold, sir. Gets it deep. Awasiuk takes the hit from Park to try and pick up possession. Gallant. Spears it for Goldser. Goldser dragging it behind the net. Perez comes away with it. Backhander forward. Gallant sweeps it far sideboards as the Broncos go for the change. Del Bonus angles it in, hit the linesman, and lands for Cameron Burke. Quite a few pucks have hit linesmen here tonight. Brown on the backhander in. Karma. Plays it behind for Pia Guy. Rimmed around by Vieira to the point. Well held in by Burke. Brown. Pia Guy. Stick lifted by Brown. Tried to center it. Lands for Boardingham. Will take it behind the net. Now Tyler Barone plays it forward. Andrew Seitz getting away of the pass intended for Herlihy. Karma out. Slows it for Vieira. 11.30 to go in the third as the stretch pass. Too far for Coop, for Jackson shoots. Number 20, not number 22. I should have known he doesn't have the jersey sleeves gathered up so you can see his wrists. Also doesn't have that fishbowl that Cooper Spears is, uh, has been rocking this season. Defensive zone face off for the Gauchos. Off the draw for Hood. Going down to ice, Pia guy blocks it away. Shoots. Gave it away. It's touched forward by Benninger. Pia guy played it through the middle. Deflected over, shoots his stick. And now McDowell. Stick lifted by Barone. Plays for Herlihy. Paid the price taking the hit. Barone didn't like it. But now a steal by Andrew Vieira. Vieira in one on two. Angles it wide. Vieira ridden into the boards by Burke. Threw it to the slot. McDowell deflects it. Nix pokes it away for Binniger. Stretching for Hood. This one too far. And an icing. And you can see A.J. Hood just recognizing his team's getting possession, and he immediately starts gunning for the UCSB blue line. He is just looking for that stretch pass. 
Santa Clara has had a lot more success with that here tonight than UCSB has. UCSB has had to earn every inch of the ice that they've carried the puck through. Not sure what the Gauchos are lobbying from the officiating crew for. I think Barone was upset with the contact he took after delivering a pass. To be One fair, I'm not usually a huge fan of getting hit either. So. so UCSB sends Okpish, Spears, and Trenner over the boards. Official coming and having additional words. UCSB here. Looks like he was talking with Dimitri P, a guy on the end of the bench. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Dimitri P, a guy, yes, he is listed as an alternate captain this year. So Ox bears in for the draw against Boardingham. And Boardingham wins it. Park. Lavarado. Boardingham is swept away from behind by Trenner. Austin tries to move it along. Park steps up to hold it in for a moment, but Trenner works it out. Trenner shoots it in. Nix will settle it for Aiden Rupert. Park behind the net, takes the hit from Spears to move it along for Rupert. And now Andrew Seitz ahead for Brendan Boardingham. Has a man in the slot, that's Lavarado. Boardingham. Drags it around himself, shoots, and a pad save made by Karma. Under 10 minutes to play here in the third period. As Spears lobs it in high. In on the four check, Chris Cruz Holloway. Knocks it behind the net, but a nice job knocking it down. And controlling by McDowell. Feeds for Perez. Perez walks the line. Spears steps up on him. Gallant. Spears engaged in the far corner. Now McDowell. Burke tried to stretch and hopped over Brown. But there was a tit on it. So Gallant will play it forward for Strategos. Barone drags it wide. Goes in hard to the sideboards. Played it for McDowell. Now Burke. Brown. For Hood. Swept away by Vieira. Hood has it again. Walks it out in front. Hood. Wait. Shoots against the grain and screamed it wide. And you can see pretty much all night long he has that true forward mentality. Shoot first and shoot often. It's on his blade again. Guy turned around but able to turn it free for a moment before Brendan Boardingham repossesses. Burke for Boardingham. Throws to the slot for Hood. Hops his stick but lands for McDowell. That shot blocked as well by Cruz Holloway. Gauchos dick the puck free and Dimitri Strategos carries in. One on two. Swept away by Burke. Under eight minutes remaining. Frankie Nix currently pitching a shutout. Shot from the line, tipped just wide. Thrown back in front by Goldser. And Nix, there and waiting, freezes it at the far post. Boy, that shot from Piagai from the point. Great pace on it. Again, just wide. And it's just about an inch away from you getting that broadcaster's jinx to finally go through and get one back behind the goaltender for Santa Clara. I mean, it worked for 44 years for Bob Miller. Come Just on. about. Just about. I mean, if you're going to talk about, you know, legends of the broadcasting game, I don't think you can get any higher than that. Off the draw. Del Bonus was stabbed down. Nick still made the save. Owasiuk took a heavy hit, but Park able to play it out. Sends it the length of the ice. Vieira is there for the icing. A little bit of a dangerous play there back behind the net as well. Wasiak down on the seat of his pants when I believe it was Park who came through with the hit. It wound up being almost a hip-to-head contact. Don't think he got all of Wasiak. Wasiak got up pretty quickly. Clearly no worse for wear.
And Nix, again, makes the save at the far post as Gold and Del Bonus draw a crowd. Just getting one extra whack in there, see if they can get a puck to pop loose. And the defense really taking exception to that one, keeping them away from the goaltender. Park has been very vocal tonight. He is not afraid to let his opponents know he's not going to take very much of that. Off the draw, Santa Clara controls, and Perez plays in. Piagai behind the net, escapes the back pressure. Goldzer lost it in his feet to Binniger, to the point. Rupert loads and fires off the end boards. Stabbed by Perez, Karma got a piece of it. Now comes for Lavarado. Back to the point, Rupert. Through traffic, lands for Lavarado. His backhander is blocked. Sent in front, thrown over the top by Perez. Oh boy, Gauchos get away with that one. A puck on edge, and, per and Perez, excuse me, just skies it over the crossbar. 6.35 to go here in the third period. Park. It's the return off the bounce back by Emmett Rupert. Park, the stretch pass, deflected, looking for Boardingham on the second try. Brendan backhands it ahead for Seitz. His shot blocked. Brown has it, though. Throws it in front. Jamming bodies. Andrew Seitz got a stick on it, but Karma has it held at the near post. You did mention last night in the Ice in Paradise era, ice hockey at UCSB has never been shut out at home. That's not true. Oh, it's not. That is not true. I did some research. I don't remember that game then. Matter of fact, the last time that ice hockey at UCSB was shut out came in the first season of Ice in Paradise and happened to be the last game that they played, a 5-0 loss at the hands of Chapman in the California Cup title game. You are correct. I forgot about that one. So okay. let's say they've never been shut out during regular season play. That counts as well. The fewest goals that the Gauchos had all of last season was just one against University of California Berkeley on a travel day where the team spent six-plus hours in a bus driving up from Santa Barbara to play in Oakland. Boardingham tries walking to the front of the net. From the line, McDowell shot is going wide. Karma takes no chances. Catches and holds. And Karma's looked very controlled so far through his abbreviated appearance. He had a couple quick shots that were fairly difficult saves. Came up, met those tests, and he's looked very controlled, very stable in the net to this point so far. In his spell of starting goaltender Will Hahn, who, again, we've said this before earlier, not really sure the reason why he was pulled other than maybe just to get some experience for Karma. None of the three goals so far for Santa Clara were even remotely close to his fall. Could be the old switch the goalie, try and light the fire under the side trick as well. And Spears plays it forward for Okpish. Okpish, McDowell anger, angles him off it. Chip to the front, saved by Nick, says McGroney. Was looking, Trenner was lurking. Nick's had none of it. And a little bit of just some extra contact there from Trenner. He goes over, apologizes to Nix. They bump fists. Good sportsmanship there, recognizing the incidental contact, not on purpose. Okpish on the draw with Perez. Kyle wins it for the visitors. Park with Okpish draped all over him. Forces the play to the near side boards. Held in at the point by Rupert. The shot deflects, sent in front just through the legs of Spears by Okpish. Now angled forward for Hood. Two on one with Perez. He'll shoot it himself. Karma makes himself big and collapses down as the rebound remains in front of him. And I think that's some good research and some good uh, paying attention to the game for Karma, recognizing that over the last two nights, realizing that Hood does not really have the propensity to make that pass first unless there is really not a shooting angle. Knowing that that puck is probably coming right at him, he gets out, doesn't even worry about the passer, makes himself big, and makes what looks like a fairly routine save against a very good goal, goal scorer in Hood. Sights with it. Far wall. Tried to center it. Intercepted by Barone. He'll curl behind the net. 
to lead the Gaucho breakout. Rupert carries it into the zone and will take it near corner. Ridden down by Park. Rupert takes the hit, turns it over. Rupert wraps it in front. Deflected away by Boardingham. Here comes Chris Brown. Brown in, walks, shoots wide. Negroni moves it along. Held in. And it looks like we're going to get a boarding penalty back behind the play. UCSB with a late opportunity here. Four minutes, 20 seconds remain in the third period as the penalty door swings open. So cracks open the door of opportunity for UCSB. Great catch on that behind the play, Kyle. And Chris Brown is going to be the one who takes the seat for what looks like a boarding penalty. Not a whole lot of objection from him either. I think he recognized as soon as it was called that he was going. Still, nonetheless, doesn't appear to be all that happy about it. Would you be giving the other team an opportunity with your side ahead by three? Fourth power play try of the game for the Gauchos. They are 0 for 3 thus far. Okpish on the draw, wins it far boards. But it's played to the line, and Piagai can't hold it in. A great hustle play by Seitz to send it out to neutral ice. Piagai brings it in and drops it back for Barone. For Piagai. Throws it in front. Score! Chris Owasiak, his second of the season. There's that door cracking open, Kyle. A power play goal with 3.57 to play in the third. And it's about as simple as you like as well. This is the way coaches draw them up on that whiteboard on the bench. It's a good carry in play from Dimitri Piagai to just walk it in, carry the puck down low, and it's a quick feed right across the front of the net. Owasiak wide open. Santa Clara falls asleep just a little bit on top of that crease where they've been so good all weekend long. UCSB finally gets a pass through, just like it happened yesterday when Trenner scored from that position. UCSB now gets one with the special teams here. Gauchos chasing two as Goldser had it taken away by Perez. Tried to feed it to the front. And now Goldser and the Gauchos abreast. Three on two. And just unable to keep control at the line, Owasiak. Gaucho's offside. And Justin Goldzer knows he probably should have carried that puck over the blue line before that pass, just being a little bit too far ahead of the play, and he kind of put himself that way, making that last second pass to someone who was a little bit further back than he maybe he would have thought. And unfortunately, a good opportunity goes begging for the Gauchos. Michael Lavarado. Slapper from the line, misses wide, long rebound, kicks for Goldser. Who can't get it out of the zone. Sights. Couldn't get it through, it's played out, and Park controls at the red line. Still and lob it back in. Still haven't put that goal up on the board over there with now three minutes left to play. If you look in the upper left corner, you see technical director Jasmine Kellogg on the spot, putting the one on the scoreboard as you watch on the Ice Hockey at UCSB broadcast network. Paying more attention than the one actually running the one in the building. Pia guy couldn't get it through. This one sent long. Hood will not get there. Vieira back for the icing with 2.43 to go here in period three. And you can see the heaviness starting to set into the legs of Santa Clara. They are trying to play as aggressively as possible in the Gaucho end, but having to go back and forth up and down the ice for two nights in a row now, especially being a short bench compared to ice hockey at UCSB. It looks like we got a timeout being called here by Santa Clara just to get those players a little bit of rest. That fatigue could wind up playing a factor here as we are now down to just under three minutes to play. So, a quick reset for you. Teams scoreless in the first period. Santa Clara. Scored the first three goals of the game, getting two in the second. A shot from the point by Mark McDowell. Deflected on the way in. 
and found the back of the net just under seven minutes into the second period of play. And Kyle Perez, after being stopped twice on the near post, got the rebound, wrapped it around the cage, and on the backhand, slammed it in to make it 2 nothing at 8.18 of the second period. The real tone changer, though, for the game came on the goal by Dakota Binniger, scoring off a nice passing play from A.J. Hood, 123 into the third period. The Gauchos get their first of the game on the power play at the 16.03 mark. Chris Awasiak scoring his second of the season, assisted by Dimitri Piagai. Maybe a secondary assist in there as well for Tyler Barone, which we'll verify, and you'll be able to read tomorrow in the UCSBHockey.com box score. But now, 2.43 to play in period three. Still plenty of time for the Gauchos, and wackier things happen in the ACHA seemingly every weekend. Off the draw, the shot from the point, Nick steers it wide. Perez held in at the point. Turned around, the shot, hit the defender. Arkpish shot, save made by Nix. Spears was there sniffing for the rebound. But Nick's very good about controlling the caroms off his equipment. Boy, that Spears, you said sniffing around. He barely missed getting his stick to that one. I have to think if he would have knocked it loose, he would have had a pretty open net in order to just bury that thing into. Ockpish wins the draw back to the point. Shot looking for the tip. Ockpish couldn't get it through. Thrown by Trenner. Wide back post. Brown. Just able to angle it past the activating Gallant. But Liam regains possession for the Gauchos. Throw it in on Nix. He'll just block it for Burke, who curls behind the net. In on the four check. Hood plays it off the glass for Perez. Perez, two on one. Shoots blocker saved by Karma under two to play in the third. Gauchos may be looking to bring him off the ice at some point. He's already started out of his cage, but it's lobbed back in by Brown, and Karma will play it for Gallant. He's definitely looking at that bench. UCSB is trying to see if they can get a time, get him off, get that sixth attacker on. Couldn't step through the second man, Trenner. And now Hood at the line is a hair offside as Sites is still in 129 to go in the third. And boy, UCSB got lucky. They did pin Sites up against the board just inside that blue line in order to draw Hood offside. If he was about another foot and a half further back, that was an onside play, and A.J. Hood was in all alone. We talked some about the inaugural Ice in Paradise season. Or the Gauchos, it was seemingly this much time left that they trailed by two against Cal Lutheran before catching lightning, then winning it in overtime on Cam Patterson's goal. Delbonis throws it to the front. Puck is loose. Try to be played in front. Blocked by Park. It's touched forward. Net is empty. Sights ragging it, shooting it wide. Under a minute to play in the third. Stretch pass. Stubbed forward by Vieira. Barone couldn't sweep it back. Park off the glass. Diving attempt by Piagai gets past him. 40 seconds is back to retrieve Awasiak. No, it's enough for an icing. And a little bit of objection there on that one from Dagota Binniger, who's uh, trying to accuse the UCSB defense of maybe sandbagging that a little bit in order to draw that icing call. He definitely did not have the inside position there. I don't know if he's trying to say he won that race. 40.2 seconds remain. Delbonis and Perez on the draw. Delbonis wins it back to Vieira. Shot through traffic, deflects. Turn forward, Hood on his horse off the Binninger touch. Curled it wide behind the net. Awasiuk, two men on him. Stretch pass ahead. Barone handles it in his feet. 20 seconds. Barone on the carry in. Barone swept away from him by Benninger. Back out to neutral ice. Vieira tries the pass ahead. Park intercepts. He heaves it. It's gloved in the neutral zone by Awasiak. 
But that'll do it. The Santa Clara University Broncos have taken the first two here on the Ice in Paradise sheet to complete the opening weekend sweep. Just the second time in program history that the Gauchos have come up empty on opening weekend. 3-1, your final here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network. And I think we have to give Santa Clara a lot of credit for the way they played these last two games. Just staunch defense from start to finish, whistle to whistle, giving the Gauchos very little in the way of opportunities. They played an incredibly disciplined game in terms of their defense, and you got to give a lot of credit to A.J. Hood as well. Every time he's on the ice, just an extreme danger. He's very difficult for every Gaucho defender to try to handle. They didn't let him onto the score sheet in terms of goals tonight, but nonetheless still getting the assist to set up what was arguably the mood changer, the, game, the goal that really swung the game and kind of put it more or less out of reach for ice hockey at UCSB, even though it's not going to go down as the game winner it definitely will go down as the one that probably influenced and sealed the result. It is the Santa Rice Santa Barbara post-game show. Santa Rice Santa Barbara located in Goleta is the premier destination for hockey and figure skating equipment and apparel. On the web at centericesb.com. Center spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. Well, Kyle, let's take a look at your scoring summary brought to you by UCSBHockey.com, your home for the Ice Hockey at UCSB program where you can find previews, recaps, links to all the social media platforms as well as replays of Gaucho contests. Scoreless first period, Santa Clara opened the scoring with a goal that's currently credited to Mark McDowell. His shot from the middle of the blue line deflected in front past Gaucho starter Will Hahn to make it 1-0 Santa Clara just before the seven-minute mark. Then at 8-18, Kyle Perez, a great individual effort, after being stuffed twice at the near post, curled it around the back of the cage and wrapped a backhander in to the far side. Santa Clara held a 2-0 lead after two periods of play. And as you mentioned, Kyle, the real tone-changing goal, Dakota Binniger scoring 123 into the third period off of a nice setup with Kyle Perez getting it ahead for A.J. Hood on the carry-in, and his back post pass found Vinegar alone unmarked. He made no mistake going bar down to make it 3-0. The Gauchos get their only goal of the game on the second of the season by Chris Awasiak. Awasiak scoring on the power play, assisted by Dimitri Piagai, Tyler Barone playing it forward for Demo to ultimately make the feed across to the bottom of the far circle for the lone gaucho goal on the game. UCSB 1 for 4 on the power play. Santa Clara 0 for 1. The final shot numbers, Kyle, if you could quickly peek over and see what those were in the third period. 42-32 total for, for ice hockey UCSB. 32 for, uh, 32 for Santa Clara. So UCSB... Boy, they definitely put up a 18 total of shots in 16. That, 16 shots in that third period. Lennon Karma is the stats major, not me, <laughs> having to do the quick mental math. But the opportunities and the pucks were certainly put on frame by the Gauchos in that final period. Just could not get the ultimate result aside from the lone power play marker by Chris Awasia. And I feel like the offense definitely did a much better job tonight of generating those chances. They found a lot more holes in that Santa Clara defense, and they did make Frankie Nix work a lot harder to get that win tonight. Nonetheless, the defense of Santa Clara really on display here this weekend. I think that was definitely the deciding factor. UCSB showing a lot of promise, showing some hope. Chris Awasiak having a goal in both of these two games is very encouraging for UCSB. The young freshman joining this year. There's a lot to look forward to with this team. I think there's a lot of growing that they can still do. And I think the number one thing they can take away from this is just don't get discouraged. It's a very difficult opening series. This is an experienced team with Santa Clara. They play a very disciplined game. They're very well coached, and they faced a, a tremendous goaltender. 
in Frankie Nixon. That's really hard to overcome when you have a very young team like UCSB this season. Yeah, and to your point, in this now, the third season of calling ice hockey at UCSB action, even in the games against Cal, against UCLA last season, they were not as structured, they were not as disciplined, they were not as rigorous in their formation as Santa Clara was both last year and this year. It's truly a testament to the program and to head coach Jackson Morgus and how the Broncos run their ship and move to 4-1-0 on the season and 3-0-0 in Pacific Collegiate Hockey Association play. The Gauchos now 0-2-0, 0-2-0 overall. Time now for our social media three stars of the game. Follow the Gauchos on social media, like at facebook.com slash icehockeyucsb. Follow at UCSB Ice Hockey on Twitter, UCSB Ice Hockey on Instagram, and be sure to use the Gaucho Hockey Snapchat filter when you're here at Ice in Paradise. Kyle, I'm going to go with a clean sweep for the visitors in this three stars, and my third star is going to be a player that, well, he did not appear on the score sheet in either of the games for Santa Clara. Captain Phil Park was just an absolute rock on the back end for Santa Clara. Did such a good job of directing traffic, making sure almost every time he tried to get a zone clearance, be it off the boards, off the glass, or making the stretch pass, he found a way to make the play and relieve the pressure for his defenders a great job of winning battles along the end boards. It's stuff that doesn't show up on the score sheet, but it's a big reason why number five has that C on his left breast. Absolutely, and for kind of similar reasons, I'm going to go with a forward from Santa Clara for this one. Brendan Boardingham, for much the same reason, his two-way play for this entire series was just outstanding. Playing both ends of the puck and making several key defensive stops when his team got caught a little bit in front of the puck. Gaucho's going back the other way. I can think of specifically tonight him chasing down Cooper Spears and forcing a shot to either miss over the top or he may have even gotten a stick on it at the last, so at the last second. But the Nutley, New Jersey native had himself a whale of a series here this week, and I was very impressed with his two-way play. I give, him, I give him my third star. I think for my second star tonight, it's a little bit tough to think of this one, but I think I have to give it to Cooper Spears. I think Cooper Spears was an impact player here this evening. He was dangerous when he was on the ice. He was quick. He was sharp. He was engaged in this game, and he really was doing everything he could to will UCSB to two points. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite get it. Again, I'm not really sure if that breakaway during the three-on-three, -three, whether that one was tipped over the top or if he just kind of whistled it over the top. Either way, if that goal would have gone in, I guarantee you this whole third period would have just completely changed and been different. Nonetheless, I feel like he had an outstanding game tonight. I've got to give him some recognition, so I give him my second star. My second star comes from Santa Clara, and it is their second line center. Second line really in just name only when you roll out two lines, but Kyle Perez. He gets the game-winning goal on a tricky bit of play by the net side. I currently have him as the secondary assist on the third goal of the game, getting the puck forward for A.J. Hood. A two-point night as it stands right now for Perez. And not only that, Perez had the primary assists on both of Hood's goals in the first period yesterday. And it seemed like every time Santa Clara needed to get a defensive zone faceoff win, be it on the penalty kill, be it late in a period, it was number 21 in black, the winger from Scottsdale, Arizona, who came out, came through, and made the play for his team. A four-point weekend, a well-played series for Kyle Perez. The game-winning goal tonight, he, my second star of the game. And the first star, let's say it on three, one, two, three, Frankie, Frankie Nix. I had a feeling we were going to be in agreement on that one. You, w this is the type of performance that you just need from your goaltender, especially the second game of back-to-back -back when you're short-benched, you're going to give up more chances, the guys in front of you are tired, their legs have been moving. 
you need your goaltender to step up and make the saves at key times. That's what Frankie Nix is so sometimes infuriatingly good at. He showed it in spades here this weekend. I think he absolutely was the difference maker here tonight, making several outstanding saves, including a couple on breakaways when the defense got caught in front of the puck. UCSB was borderline dominant during that three-on-three -three stretch, earning several very good chances. He was equal to every single one of them. I think he got his team to win here tonight. 41 saves for Knicks. He had over 50 in the game against San Jose State. The lone loss that these Broncos have suffered this season, 4-3 to three in their second game of the year. Santa Clara, 3-1-0 on the season, 2-0-0 in PCHA play, ice hockey at UCSB, 0-2-0 in both overall and in league play. And the next game, Kyle, coming up Friday, October the 27th, 9.45 start against the California Lutheran University Knights. And while this is a long and storied rivalry, the local rivalry, the local derby, to use a soccer parlance, if you will, between these two teams. They met more than any other side in the first year when the teams complete, competed in the NCHA. It was the Gauchos knocking off the top seeded Knights to advance to that California Cup championship game in 2015-2016. Last year, the teams each winning the game slash games on their home ice, CLU taking both at the Isoplex in Simi Valley, UCSB winning here in overtime. For those who are joining us this season, to the friends and family of the 12 new faces for the Gauchos, to the loco students who haven't had the opportunity to experience a UCSB versus CLU game, what can fans expect here at Ice in Paradise next Friday night? A lot of animosity. A lot of physicality. Both these teams play very similar styles. Both of them not necessarily the quickest teams, but they do not shy away from playing a structured game, playing a hard-hitting game. And if the lineups for California Lutheran are similar to last year's, I'm thinking of one player that's been an absolute thorn in ice hockey at UCSB's side. If he happens to still be in the lineup when these two meet next weekend, Boy, it's going to be a real, real challenge. If you think that A.J. Hood was tough, man, you got to try slowing this guy down. Let's not say Blake Aguilar lest he appear. It, you know, suddenly he might show up in your dreams and start scoring goals on you. That is next Friday, October the 27th, 9.45 start between the Gauchos and CLU. That's the next time we'll be with you here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network from Ice in Paradise, where everyone can play hockey. Ice in Paradise offers skating school for all ages, with the Goleta Youth Hockey League, Monarchs Girls Ice Hockey Club, Santa Barbara Ice Hawks Travel Team, and more. More information available on the web at iceinparadise.org. That'll do it for us on the Center Ice Santa Barbara post-game show. Center Ice Santa Barbara located at 7127 Hollister Avenue, Suite 8 in Goleta, and on the web at centericesb.com. Center spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. You'll be able to read the box score, the full recap, as well as get a preview and maybe even see highlight packages from this weekend on the official website of Ice Hockey at UCSB, ucsbhockey.com. So make sure you're checking in with that over the course of the coming week. Kyle and I, we put a lot of content out there, but that's because the young men for Ice Hockey at UCSB certainly deserve it with the work that they put in at a world-class academic institution and playing at a world-class facility like Ice in Paradise. It's a pleasure for myself and Kyle Nicholas to be a part of it. Kyle, final thoughts for the evening. I think it's a good weekend to start off the, se to start off the season for UCSB. Would have been nice to see them get a couple points, but I feel like they did improve on a lot of the things that were their shortcomings last night. I feel like this is a good, solid foundation that they can use to build on the rest of the season. Again, we've spoken about how much better Santa Clara looks this season in terms of their structure, the way they're playing these games compared to last year. 
a tough opening weekend, but nonetheless, I think there's a lot to be excited about with this young UCSB team. I think they've got a lot of good things in store for them up ahead. Big thank you to our support staff for cameraman Jesse Gutierrez, who knows all about these after midnight games here at Ice in Paradise, and for technical director and statistician Jasmine Kellogg, who's experiencing that joy for the first time. Big thank you to you, and big thank you to you, the viewer, for joining us here on the Ice Hockey at UCSB Broadcast Network. For Kyle Nicholas, I'm Eric Evelhawk. Ice Hockey at UCSB drops the second of the home opening weekend to Santa Clara. 3-1, the Gauchos back at it next Friday against rival Cal Lutheran. Until then, thanks for watching. Have a splendid end to your Saturday. Great start to your Sunday morning. Good night from Goleta.